Minecraft's desert biome is a wasteland. Devoid of a naturally occurring wood source, this place poses the ultimate challenge to survive. So can I survive 100 days of hardcore Minecraft in a desert-only world? Well, there's only one way to find out. So grab a snack, leave a like, and let the adventure begin. Well, there's sand as far as you can see, but not a single tree. I'm excited to give you my first ever live commentary. It looks like we've gotten ourselves a wonderful spot. I really do like this area. Hopefully we can find a village nearby, because we have 100 days to make the most out of this desert-only world. During these 100 days, I have three main goals. The first will be to find ourselves a lovely home to settle down at and eventually make it into a wonderful desert civilization. Our second goal is going to be to beat the game and fight the Ender Dragon. And of course, since this is hardcore Minecraft, our third goal is going to be to not die. And I guess it's going to be important for me to not really run too much at the moment because until we find a village, I'm kind of stuck on the food situation. And the shelter situation, this kind of is a little bit nerve wracking. We have some bunny rabbits over here, but I think they're going to be a little bit difficult to capture. So it's to keep on collecting sticks as we go so that we can make some tools ASAP. But I gotta say, these guys really are quite cute. It's a shame they'll probably be our main food source for the entire series, or at least for the beginning of it when we can get ourselves a good trade from a farmer. And lo and behold, we have a village. I think that we can consider that a saving grace. Let's head on over there and see what we have in store. Okay, we got our first food too. That's a big score. But we're gonna have to find a way to cook that food because this is the only food that we got and we're gonna have to make the most of it on day one. And if this is a village right here. I really do like the area. We've kind of got a cool mountainous desert backdrop right here and this would be an awesome place to make a desert oasis. All right, let's see what we have right here. It might not be a village, but I think I'm okay with the temple, except for I'm realizing that I can't dig down. Well, this is a problem. I guess we're gonna have to mark this place for later. And the sun is already starting to set. Hopefully we can find ourselves a village soon. There is a desert well in the distance over there and I think that we have found a village. Because I wanted to have the most fun when doing this, I haven't looked at anyone else's Desert 100 Days videos. I did take a quick look at Legion V's video. Calabunga. And I do know that it's going to be important to get iron from an iron golem. So finding this awesome looking village is a huge win. And I have my fingers crossed that this village has a crafting bench because it's the only way that we're really going to be able to make tools at first. I gotta say, I think that this is the hardest challenge that I've undertaken in hardcore Minecraft. And there may not be a lot to eat here at the desert, but it really is beautiful as the sun sets in the horizon. And that could have been the end of the playthrough. Let's take some of these blocks. It's actually good that we got some cobblestone right there. We're already at the stone age. But we're gonna have to find ourselves a way out of this cave right here. And let's get to that village quickly because the sun is already starting to set. And being already at low health, I don't think I want to take any chances. And we got a little bit more rabbit right here. We found our camel friend. This is really beautiful. I like the terracotta that we have in this village. We've got our iron golem friend. We're not gonna see you for too much longer. I am dearly sorry, but you are the protector of the village right now. However, we do have to do some protecting over here. You, sir, need to get away from my villagers. Actually, I think it might be smarter to bring this guy over to the iron golem. Protect me, sir. One shot. We'll eat the food that we have, although it's going to poison us. Any food is good food at the moment. But speaking of, we actually do have some hay bales, so I think that the food situation is good for day one. Scratch that. Let's see if we can find ourselves a crafting table. Not only no crafting table, but we're trapped with a creeper and a spider outside. I think we're going to have to sleep the first night. In our first day's haul, we got 11 sticks, some cactus, a bunch of sugar cane, two raw rabbits, some sandstone, some grubs. This is part of a mod pack that we'll be running with, and I don't really know what it does. I guess it gives you a little bit of food. Some sand, some cobblestone, and two hay bales. And Bula, I'm gonna have to take your bed for the night. Of course I can't sleep with monsters nearby. And there we go, sweet dreams, our first advancement in this game. And Bula also does happen to have a farm, so that's gonna be big for the game plan. Let's just make sure that this skeleton dies so that we can get his bones or arrows. And be careful of these creepers that we have down below here. And of course, they've seen me. I see you, good sir, dear creeper. And another hit and try to get away. And the third one, see if we can actually get the KO here. And five, how many is it going to take? And a six. And a seven. And a eight. And a nine. And a ten. How many? And 11, and a 12, and a 13, and a 14. 14 hits and he still didn't die. Are you freaking kidding me? And a one. <laughs> Are we going to do it again? Let's let you explode, I think. We'll take all the extra materials that you're going to give us. I think we can harvest some wheat and get us some seeds. And if this village has a crafting table, we'll stay here. If not, we'll take the dirt and we'll head on our way. And a crafting table. This, ladies and gentlemen, 
is now going to be our home. We'll head over here to activate the waystone, and I guess this place is called Pajipoli. We'll be able to change the name later, but since we don't have any experience, we won't be able to. And you're a funky fellow, Mr. Camel Man. We have two pigs in here, which is huge for the game plan as well. And a little bit of water never hurt the game plan too. Now I think it's time to take a look about what's in the village. We have a cute, quaint little spiral house over here. Hopefully it has a chest at the top, and it does. Some wheat and bread, okay, that's our first food. And I think that taking a chest too will be super handy. Now we have some portable storage, and we can take a look at our surroundings over here. I think that this is a wonderful spot to build an oasis. In particular, I really like that island with the sugar cane that you can see behind my head. Now as we eat our bread, I realize that the next big thing is to take out our iron golem friend. And man, this always scares the daylights out of me. Especially when he's kind of stuck under the waystone like that. Well, let's see what we can do. I think I'll make a spiral like this just so I know what I'm doing and we've officially angered him now for the grueling process it looks like he's stuck of slaying this guy down you'll always be remembered first iron golem and he gave us five too the minecraft gods are on our side today so we'll head on over to our crafting table and we can make our first iron pickaxe this is working way better than I thought it was going to and I say that we follow this villager and head on down here to see if we can get some quick coal and I'm trying to get this bunny rabbit too you've gone into a hard spot to get out of mr. bunny rabbit just kidding I still can't get you but mission success at the end of the day and our first rabbit hide as well now I say that we also come in here we make ourselves our first iron shovel we call this little area our first home and get to work digging down here and there we have some cobblestone this right here is going to be incredibly important when it comes to getting ourselves some cooked food and i don't want to head down there yet hello there sir creeper i'm going to stay away from you however as the sun sets i would consider this adventure a major success thus far i think there might be a lava pool over there but hopefully i'm not jinxing myself let's head on back to our new home where we'll craft ourselves a furnace and then i wonder can you use cactus this as a fuel type it looks like you can't so we're gonna have to use our sticks unfortunately but food is food at this point in the game so i think that my next step is actually going to be to lock the villagers in their houses and we'll take a couple of these hay bales we'll replant them later on i sure do hope that another iron golem spawns in soon i could really use the extra protection right now we'll lock you in we'll see what you have to have looks like you have an emerald and some more bread and it looks like some green dye too thank you for your donation and of course we'll lock you in too However, I do hear a Zombatron coming my way. Let's see if we can do any damage tonight. I do need me some armor. There we go, Monster Hunter. Looks like we have a horde of husks coming our way too. I think it's time to go to sleep for the night. I do not like that sound. I'm really hoping that we don't have to wait off the night. Maybe we can make this into like a mob spawner. Oh, it really has become one. Let's see if we can get some quick XP from this. Look how many zombies there are. And I really wish we could do something, but I think we're just gonna have to wait out the night. I hear burning. It looks like the sun is coming up. That's big for the game plan. Except for do husks not burn down? But time is of the essence, and we do have another iron golem to help protect us from these invaders here on day three. Take him out. This man really puts in the work. So we're gonna harvest ourselves some beetroot right here. We'll replant it down, getting a seedy place you stole that from me. Not cool, sir. Anyway, we'll get a CD place advancement, and then we can take some bone meal to get this extra going. Harvest a little bit more, and now that we have three beetroot, we can head over to our pigs and get the birds and the bats advancement. And ladies and gentlemen, our food crisis has been resolved. I'm going to call you peanut butter, and you're going to be jelly. And I'm going to have plenty of PB&Js this haunted days. So while it's still daylight, I think I'm going to look around for an azalea tree. I'm hoping that rooted dirt is kind of like dirt in that you can use it for planting crops and I don't really know how to get <gasps> oh gamma and I don't really know how to get dirt besides going to villages so I think that trying to find an azalea tree would be a good bet and we have our desert well right here maybe there's some suspicious sand that's maybe worth looking into a little bit later actually maybe that's a good idea but first we're gonna have to find ourselves some copper we'll do a quick survey of the area for an azalea tree and maybe try to take out some bunny rabbits while we're at it and the sun is already starting to set but I actually think that tomorrow we're gonna head over to the desert temple and see if we can get ourselves some diamonds now that would be a huge step forward for the desert playthrough and it's probably important to get ourselves some sticks while we're at it and I'm dearly sorry my good friend but before the sun sets you must die man it takes a lot of hits to kill you and there we go let's see how many iron we have you gave us four for a grand total of five i'll take that any day of the week and i actually don't know you, you can eat beetroot that's news to me we'll craft ourselves our first iron sword <laughs> that'll be important and then maybe we'll try to start digging down here now while i dig down into the caves it would be a huge win to find a mine shaft i don't know if their spawning is different in desert only biomes or anything like that 
But I know that's one of the first sure ways that we can get wood. Besides that, any iron at the moment, and in particular some coal, would be important. And finding some gravel is actually wonderful for the game plan. I would love to get a couple of flints so that we can make a Fletcher. And there we go, now we can start making some stick trades. But we'll keep on heading down, hopefully we can find some coal. And just as soon as I said it, our first coal of the playthrough. It looks like it's a solid vein too. We'll craft ourselves a couple of torches, and we might as well mine until this iron pick runs out. And it looks like we've reached the deep slate level. Still no iron in sight however. <laughs> All right, we've stumbled across a cave. I'm going to take a peek out to see if there's any iron nearby. If so, we'll nab it since there's light from the lava. I see some gold down here. There's some redstone. No iron yet though. Scratch that. I see some over here. But of course there's a zombie. I know it should be easy, but it's so scary with no armor. And I actually forgot that I had an iron sword right there, but it looks like there's plenty of iron on the walls and even more over here. It's a little bit precarious to get this iron, but it's definitely worth it right now. And that's the end of the iron pick. But we have 13 raw iron right there. That's huge for the game plan. Scratch that, 14. And now I think it's just about time to head back to the surface. However, since the sun still isn't up and there are zombies trying to get me, it's probably best I bide my time for the moment. And while I do it, I think I'm going to eat some raw and flush. That changing sky color makes me a very happy man, as well as when I hear the burning zombie sounds. And it sounds like the coast is clear. I did hear a skeleton just burn down, so I'm hoping to get some bones. Nope, just some arrows. And a creeper pal over here. Let's get you away from the farm. I keep forgetting that I have an iron sword. I think we might get some gunpowder here. And this epic hat grab bag is just from another mob that I have on my mod pack. It's for like getting fancy dancy mods, but I'm not going to use it for this playthrough. But we'll head back to our home so that we can craft up some iron. We can finally put some coal in the smelter, and we'll start to get that iron smelting. I'll also make another iron pickaxe while we're waiting, and put away some of the inventory that we don't need. Right about now, I'm really wishing that we had wood. I want nothing else than to craft a shield, and I can't do it. It seems like all I have is rotten flesh. We'll make our first ever iron chest plate. Let's put that guy back on. I think that we'll make ourselves some bread as well, and saddle up with an iron helmet. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to hit the desert temple. Alabunga. As we approach this thing, let me just say for the record, I have really no idea what to do when messing around with desert temples. I'm gonna dig around this area right here, make sure that there are no mobs down here, and then we'll dig on down, and this is where I get nervous. We'll take out all the TNT. Okay, and I think we're okay. Let's see. Woo -hoo -hoo! Dune armor trims, a bunch of gold, gunpowder, string. In this one, we have a ton of bones and string. In this one, we have a golden apple. Now I'm really starting to feel good. And in the last one, we have a saddle with some emeralds and some more bones and gunpowder. I'm gonna take these chests as well. We're probably gonna need them at the moment. And I would consider this a mighty good haul. We'll pillar her back on up. And I don't think that there's any more treasure in a desert temple. If there is, please do let me know. I mean, I don't really know what this room is for. But I feel like there's something to it. But anyway, it beats me. As the sun sets, we're gonna head back to the village, and you could consider me a very happy man. Of course, diamonds would have been nice, but I'm not gonna complain with having a desert temple and a village so close to one another. And I gotta say, I really am enjoying the live commentary thus far. If you are enjoying it too, definitely let me know with a like on the video. This is definitely out of my comfort zone, and so if you're a fan, I'd really like to know it so that I can continue to keep doing these videos. And we return back home much richer than we were beforehand. Or I'm rolls 15 gunpowder in total. We have gold ingots, we have golden apples, saddles, chests, smithing armor templates, tons of bone that we're gonna bone meal probably right now, along with TNT and some extra other goodies. And we have so much stuff that we already need another chest. I think that we'll take half of the bones, we'll turn it into bone meal, and let's get to work on harvesting some crops before the husks come. We've gotten 12 beetroot out of that, so we're gonna head over to the pigs and we'll get along to breeding again. Peanut butter, jelly, and fluff, and maybe Nutella too. What a delicious sandwich we have back here. And here comes the husk. But you know, I think that we might be strong enough to fight you on now. Get off me. Not bad for day three. So it is still the night of day three in our hardcore world. However, it's a brand new day in real life and I just got poisoned by that husk. But with the new day comes a new game plan. So first things first, this camel right over here, her name is now Dorothy. And Dorothy is going to be the shining light of our desert oasis. By that, I mean I'm going to officially name this place Cameltopia. And we'll be making a bigger than life replica of Dorothy over in our desert oasis right here, which dare I say will be the most fertile place in the entire land. But you can't catch me slipping, you dang husk. And it looks like a spider has intruded. 
into our pig pen. Yeah, get out of there. Time to make some quick work of you. And you too, my dear friend. So as the sun starts to rise, we're gonna head into our setter home right here. We'll grab ourselves a saddle. We're also gonna steal this bed and place this saddle on Dorothy's back. It is time for an adventure. And honestly, I don't know what all these other Minecraft YouTubers are saying. This feels like a pretty quick ride to me. And so our job is gonna be to scour the desert wasteland until we find another village, which I gotta say was pretty easy. Now, come on, Dorothy, let's go and check out what this place has to offer. I'm sorry, girl. This second village is only about 300 blocks away. This is a completely random seed, but we are totally winning today. While I go and see what this village has to offer, we have another crafting table right here. I think it's actually best that I take this. I think that we're going to steal another bed too for the other village. And unfortunately, a huge dagger. No cows in the cow pen. However, this village does come with its wins. We're going to take all the dirt that we have right here. And this is going to be absolutely essential for the starter game. You see, in order to make Cameltopia an absolute oasis, we need crops. And we can't get crops without dirt. And I don't want to be this guy, but I think I'm going to take all of your hay bales as well. And who knows, it's pretty hard to find wood here, so we're going to take these fence gates as well. Now, the real question is, does this farm have a village? And standing up here, it looks like it doesn't. We can activate this waypoint right here, and now we have a Silaku. I hope that y'all are loving my pronunciation. And so with the sun still in the sky, I think that we're going to head back on Dorothy and try to find ourselves another village. However, I have a feeling that finding anything else around here is going to be kind of difficult. We've totally lucked out with our spawn area, and we're going to have to return to this cave right here, I have a good feeling that there could be some iron behind me. And we got a camel on the run. We got a camel on the run. And there's no way. I must be seeing something. With a third camel in the distance, this place truly is Cameltopia. And this mountain range around here is magnificent. You know, this might be my favorite place that we found thus far. I'm going to keep considering it, but this place might become Cameltopia. Hey there, my good people. I'm just going to come to stay the night if that's all right with you all. And we have two more pigs and a ton of dirt, which I'm going to steal real quick. But you are not allowed out of this pen. I know that it might not be that comfortable from now on, but we need all the dirt that we can. You'll have to... You'll have to forgive me, dear piggos. And let's see what else we have in the village. A bunch of carpet. This is massive. Okay, it looks like if we can find ourselves some diamonds, we actually might be able to enchant here too. Look how many cats there are on the mountain too. There's one. We have a second one up there, a third one, and a fourth one over here, and a fifth one, <laughs> and a sixth one. Oh, I think I can be safe that no creepers are going to come here. And once again, I think that I'm going to take all of these hay bales. Ladies and gentlemen of this village, the tax collector has come. All right, Dorothy, what do you think about this place? And I almost looked at that Enderman too. That could have been an early end to the whole playthrough. And in this chest right here, we have some more cactus. In this other chest, we're going to have some more wheat and even more bread. And I know that I probably shouldn't, but I think that I'm going to attract some mobs right here. I want to get some extra XP. Don't you worry, dear your zombie friends, I'll come to you. While we're at it, we might as well grab as much sugar cane as we can. Without getting killed, of course. Ouch! Ouch! He's not... These spiders keep getting sneak hits on me. A baby! Okay, and at three hearts, I think that it's time to take a break. But tonight has been a solid success in the desert. We're definitely going to be starting day off on a good start. And that is quite close, is it not? And now we go back to Dorothy because the moon is going to set. I think that we might save a little bit of extra time and hit the bed real quick. And we're going to wake up on day five, ready to go and maybe get some bones as well. Except for it looks like these skeletons are a little bit smarter than I thought. Looks like they're gonna hang out in the water and wait. I wonder if we get close enough to these skeletons, would they get out of the water or are they just gonna stay there forever? It looks like they're just gonna stay. So I'm gonna head back to Dorothy. Dorothy girl, it's time to go. And we'll make ourselves a quick jaunt back to Cameltopia. I did not see you. All right, Dorothy, we're going to get out of here. And so with dirt in hand, along with plenty of other goodies, Dorothy and I are going to head back to Cameltopia. We're going to take all that dirt that we harvested and get to work planting some stutter farms. I really love the cute bunnies that are hopping all around us. And I'm even happier that we're not going to have to rely on them as a source of food. And we're back home. I actually do think that I like the area here. That village is really wonderful over there on the water side with the mountains. But this village also has plenty of water. And I really do like the open spaciousness here. I think it's also going to be a perfect place to make a huge statue of Dorothy. And for those of you that are wondering, why did I name this beautiful camel here Dorothy? It is because another Minecraft hardcore YouTuber, the notorious cringy goal, named his camel Dorothy in his hardcore world. And when I saw this beautiful gal, I just knew that she was a Dorothy as well. So I think that it's best to honor Dorothy just like cringy would and make her a pretty awesome build. But ladies and gentlemen, that is still super far away from us. We have plenty more work to do, which is going to start with expanding our farm right here. However, I am quickly wondering if we can find ourselves an iron golem so that we can get a little bit more iron. Make yourselves a water bucket 
and then be able to use it to expand this farmland. Well, it looks like I've already done plenty of damage here at Cameltopia. There is no iron golem to be found. So we'll just get to work expanding the farmland in the best way that I know how to do right now, which is going to be to accentuate each line of dirt right here and then open the block so that water falls through. And real quick, I'm going to head down to see if we can get ourselves a little bit of cobblestone because we're going to need it to make ourselves an iron hoe. And we have our first stone hoe. We'll break open each block and let's see how far the water goes. Almost far enough. But I had a feeling that if I dug out a little bit longer here. The water will flow all the way down here, and so we'll replace these bottom blocks with some dirt. As the sun starts to set, we'll do the same thing on this end here, and it looks like the water goes all the way through, and now we can hoe up the entire land. Now this is really starting to look like a farm. We have 15 seeds in hand, along with some beetroot seeds, so we'll place all of these guys down on the ground, but we're unfortunately a little bit short. We can't get the whole field planted. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out these bones, we'll take out some more bone meal, and steadily get to work harvesting some more crops. And so that's going to be our finished product, and it's really not too bad for day 5 in a desert only biome. We're going to smelt up some raw rabbit, we'll also take our string and make ourselves a bow, and we also have 5 arrows to our name which is going to be huge. We'll have to deal with some intruders real quick, and then we're going to head down to our mine, and we're going to continue to go down hopefully getting some more iron. Think that we should light this area up with torches too, and for now we keep on mining. I spot myself a little bit more iron. Let's see how many we can get. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five. That's a big win right there. But sir, I'm not gonna let you ruin this mining expedition. Can you show some more iron? <laughs> It looks not. I'm gonna mine up a little bit more deep slate. We're gonna make ourselves a furnace and we'll get to work smelting up a little bit more iron, which we'll use to make a water bucket. You see, with a water bucket, I'll be able to get down to this cave, hopefully get down to diamond level, if not to get ourselves a little bit more iron. But just kidding, it looks like I've missed even more. I know that this is a desert only, but this is still one of the luckiest playthroughs I think I've ever had. And it keeps, I was gonna say it keeps on getting better, but we need to get ourselves out of here as soon as possible before, before the skeleton gets us. We're at four hearts, woo. It's not worth taking any chances right now. We're gonna smelt up some more iron from our safe spot, which will bring us to a full total of 10 iron. But I really feel like I'm not gonna be able to take any chances until we get a shield. It's gonna be really important to find a mine shaft this playthrough. And it's funny, it's actually not even worth making an axe at this point in the game. But we can take our furnace, and we're gonna head back to the surface to see if the sun has risen. It looks like it might have. And the sun has risen. Let's go take a quick check on our field. And it looks like things are starting to come together. Let's harvest ourselves some beetroot. We'll place that back down on the ground. And then we'll take those beetroots over to PB&J and do some breeding. Now this is really making me crave a ham sandwich. And I think it's just about time to see what sort of trades we have right here. A potato trade. That's not what we wanted. Come on. Lula, you're killing me. I guess we might as well harvest a little bit more beetroot. But we're not going to be able to get any trades from this guy right here. Which I gotta say is a total dagger. We have two more beetroots. Roots, so we're gonna feed the pigs one more time and a one and a two and a two and I think that it might actually be a good idea to light up this area so that we can get some more crops growing so we can make our first water bucket and we also have enough iron for a pair of pants that's gonna be three of four armor items acquired now I'm gonna want an infinite water source right next to our temporary home so let's dig up four blocks right here and we'll head on over to the water side to try to see what we can do and I know that this area is really so barren looking but at the same time it has so much potential and I really do love the way that it looks part of the reason that I'm doing this 100 days is because I really wanted to Hey! <laughs> New recipes acquired is because I really wanted to build some sort of like desert civilization in the survival kingdom, which is my other series if you've never seen it before. However, I wanted to keep things consistent at the kingdom, and so I figured a 100 days video is the best way to do it. To be honest, as much as I wanted to make a wheat trade to get some emeralds, it's actually probably going to be better to hold on to the hay bills that we have so that we can make some bread. I mean, this is really going to last us for the beginning game, or at least until we have enough pigs to make a ham sandwich. So we can place down our second water source and we are home to to an infinite source of water. And I'm gonna spare no time, I think it's time to make ourselves a little bit of a sugarcane farm. And I figure I might as well do it cinematic style. And my goodness, look at all those mobs. I think that we may have to finish this project tomorrow morning. It's time to call this project a quit for the night. So I think that I'm gonna push my luck as much as I can and try to and try to kill some mobs before the sun rises. But I gotta say, although this area isn't looking complete yet, it is looking awesome. And that, my friends, looks like a zombie villager. Let's see if we can do something to try to trap this guy in. Oh, this did not go as planned. <laughs> this man packs a punch. I think we're gonna have to wait for later on in the playthrough. Let's get rid of this man's. And I'm sorry to everyone that I let down when doing that. But the sun starts to rise. These skeletons are gonna burn right here and we're gonna continue on making our sugar cane field.
And it's safe to say that I spent the entire day of day 7 just one by one filling in each water block right here. And although it took a super long time, I really do like the finished product. But before time gets too far away from us, I say let's extend our farm right here and feed the pigs. I do have a feeling that phantoms are going to start spawning at some point and look at all those spiders. The mobs are really just unrelentless in this desert. Yeah, I'm looking at you dude. And look at all the peanut butter jelly. I'll give one to you and 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 one to you. And man, y'all are going to make such a beautiful looking sandwich. But with some infrastructure clearly in place with the farm over here and the sugarcane farm over here, let's head back down to the mines and get a boatload of iron, maybe some coal, so that we can start to make an iron farm. But of course, we can't start this mining adventure until we get rid of a couple of scum. I really am quite surprised by how many zombies you can find. Man, there's another one. <laughs> he did some damage right there too. All right, we got to play this one careful. I really am surprised with how many husks you can find around here. And there's another one. I guess the one good thing is it's pretty good for XP. But while we wait for our crops to grow over here, I think it's going to be important to go get ourselves some iron. We're going to try to find as much as we can. But man, I would do just about anything to have a shield right now. And of course, we're going to have to go back up because I don't have a crafting table. And I'll be taking you. Gosh, even doing that is so slow without an axe. And back into the mines we go for round two. And here we are once again. I do have to say this is my first time doing the desert 100 days playthrough and I have no missed attempts thus far. And golly our spawn is quite good so I swear if we end up losing the playthrough right here I'm gonna be a very unhappy man. And of course I forgot a water bucket too. I think that we can pretty much consider day 8 a total waste. We'll grab you real quick and I guess it couldn't hurt to expand our sugar cane a little bit. And a one and where'd it go? And a two. And now it's time for attempt number three. All right so we'll grab a couple of blocks just for spare in case something bad happens down there. Hey, I completely forgot about all of this iron. As I was saying, I think it actually might be better to stay near these Y levels right now because I think between 0 and negative 16, iron spawns the most. And I believe my prediction may be correct as long as we can get past this creeper fellow right here. And even more iron, let's see how it goes. Get out of here! Better safer than sorry, I think. But I must say there have been plenty of spoils in this cave thus far. Another four, another five. But we gotta be careful here. There's quite the ledge. I know that this is kind of sketchy, but I think in order to get this iron right here, the best bet is gonna be to pillar across right next to the lava. And mission success, you could say. Although, now that I think about it, it actually might be a really good idea to put down a furnace right here, craft up another three iron, and then we can take a water bucket and actually get this lava so that we can have some extra fuel for smelting. Talk about a big brain move. And we have or three iron but for those of you that are wondering that is my timer to make some pumpkin bread and so i'll be right back i love the smell of some homemade pumpkin bread but we'll put down our crafting table right here and we'll make ourselves another iron bucket will take forever to knock down the crafting table and i wonder if i jump i think i can get the hot stuff advancement and grab our first bucket of lava i'll call that a win Although now we have no light in this area. Let's make a couple of torches real quick. I guess that I probably should have brought some more sticks for this excursion. But I say that we make a quick scumpus so that we know where to come back to. Place a torch on top, place down our water bucket, and continue the adventure. And I see some iron in the distance, so we're going to mine our way over to it. I think that as they say, slow and steady wins the race. And we might as well grab some redstone while we're here too. And so now we're going to continue the descent. I almost didn't see this spider right here. And I was thinking we might be in diamond level. We just got to get past this guy first. Ooh, we have two diamond veins right next to one another. I'll grab you. I mean, how lucky could the seed be? I think that I'm going to leave it in the description for whoever else wants it. Now let's see how we fare out here. Three separate diamond veins of one diamond. Would you consider that lucky or unlucky? I'm not sure if my mind's made up, but right now I'm going to consider it lucky because this is still day eight. It seems that we've run out of our iron pick, so I'm going to craft up a little bit more iron so that we can keep on going. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not have any sticks, which means I can't craft anything. Oh man, I was not expecting this. Okay, we're going to have to see if we can get out of here. And hopefully we can salvage this furnace too. It's just going to take forever to break. I only got coal from it too. Okay, it's time to head back to the surface. And there are two skeletons. Okay, here's what I say we do. Instead of playing the tough guy, we're going to take out this zombie right here. And then we're going to mine up like a wimp. Because we just got three diamonds and I don't want to get rid of those. You know, I think I'm going to try to make a run for it first. I can slip parkour his way past all these skeletons. Maybe not all these zombies. I don't like this at all. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want this to be the end. Oh. 
So hopefully we can sneak up the water shaft. And we're back at the staircase. I think that was the luckiest I've ever been in Minecraft. Let's head to the surface and look at our spoils and maybe eat some food to be safe. And it feels good to be back here on a beautiful day. But I think before we do anything, we're going to collect ourselves a ton of sticks. That was way, way too close. The good news is it seems like these bushes do drop sticks at a pretty good rate. However, as we all know, unless we get a sapling from a wandering trader or we find a mine shaft, this playthrough is doomed. So I guess we have to hope that I keep getting lucky. But man, I never thought I was going to be taking so much time just to collect sticks from bushes. Okay, I would say I'm getting quite bored of harvesting sticks. We'll head on over to the farm, we'll give a quick harvest, and I think that we're going to feed our pigs, and that way we'll finally have a reliable food source. I love farming, and I feel like for me personally, having a fully harvested field is just a really good feeling. So with 22 beetroot in hand, we're going to head over to the PB&J fam and finally give them some good food. And I'm sorry to bring it to you, but some of y'all are going to have to go. Let's get to smelting those piggos, and we're going to replant the sugar cane while we're at it. These may be perilous lands, but I really do love the scene of a desert sunset. I'm a happy man with five cooked pork chops, and we're also going to put our iron in there. It looks like it's going to bring us to 17 total. However, in order to make a ton of hoppers, we're going to need about a full stack. So I say let's organize our materials here, and then we'll head back down to the mines. We'll keep our diamonds in here right now. We don't quite need them yet. Actually, scratch that. We only have one life here. We might as well use them now, because if we find ourselves a giant lava pool underground, we might as well get ourselves some obsidian. Making two iron pickaxes is going to bring us down to 11 iron, but I'm not going to have a repeat of last time. So we'll once again take our crafting table and we'll head back down to the mines after grabbing a bucket of lava once again and apparently dealing with some intruders. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure, is that my farm? Or is that dirt? I think it's dirt, and so this is going to be a must-go for. So once again, we're going to play the sketchy game with a creeper overhead and try to pillar up so that we can get the dirt. I promise you that my pinky is glued to the shift key right now. So let's pillar on up. And at this point in the game, I actually might be happier to find dirt than I would be to find iron. This is exactly what we're going to be needing if we want to make a desert oasis for Dorothy. In a very real sense, dirt feels more important than gold. I'm going to place down a water bucket. And we'll make a descent to grab the rest of the dirt. And we'll take care of this bad guy as well. And so we'll find ourselves with a total of over a stack of dirt. That makes me a super happy guy. We'll make our way up. Spinning ourselves away from some more creepers. And I knew I heard a skeleton. Those guys make me so nervous, I swear. And I see an enderman, but I'm not going to worry about him right now. Although it does seem like he wants some company. <gasps> no way! <laughs> this is a good, good seed. I'll leave it in the description below. We just got to get past these skeletons right here. We're going to place down our first crafting chest, make a stone axe, and collect our first wood of the playthrough. All right, Slip. So now all we got to do, we got to get through this mine shaft without dying. And if we make it to the surface, I think that everything is going to be good to go. Although I do hear skeletons shooting. And so I think that slow and steady is going to be how we win the race here. Now call me a wimp, but since our loot is so good, I'm going to mine all the way to the surface. We may lose an iron pickaxe, but I think it's going to be worth all the effort. And I'm happy to find a little bit more iron as we dig along. But I also do hear a lava pool right next to us, which is a good thing because maybe we can head right back down here. But I do not want lava to end our playthrough right now. Gosh, I hate hearing those weird, creepy cave sounds. It makes me feel like Herobrine or something worse than the warden is coming. And I can't believe it. Even more dirt. We'll toss away our tuff, toss away our cobble, toss away our andesite, toss away our diorite, grab a hold of our shovel, and get along to digging. And I seriously couldn't believe it. We couldn't be getting luckier. And that brings up to almost three full stacks of dirt. Fingers crossed that we can make it to the surface safely. And we're finding some coal as well. Oh my god goodness and it's a big vein and we're reaching sandstone once again which i think is a pretty good sign so it looks like we've reached the surface but it is nighttime so i think the safest bet is to place down our bed right here to sleep the night and then to pillar up in the morning and so as the day commences and the rays of light hit our face you could say that i'm feeling like a very successful man let's head on back to cameltopia and see what our spoils ended up turning out to be and what a beautiful sight we have right here i really do love the look of the sugarcane farm and i do know that it's ugly looking but i think it's actually a good call to maybe Maybe hole up this little area right here so that we don't die or end up getting killed by creepers later on. And once again, maybe not the prettiest, but it's going to do us a whole lot of good. And so we can smelt up four more iron. We have almost three full stacks of dirt. We have a little bit over a stack of oak planks amongst a good amount of other materials. So we're going to put them away. And then I'm thinking I need a quick break from the mines. So we're going to get to expanding our beautiful farming area.
So I think that this turned out really well. And it's crazy. We had a ton of dirt, but it only comes out to this area right here. And I had thought that we had a ton of crops, but I guess we don't. We're just going to have to keep harvesting and expand the field as we go. And while I've been doing that, I've also been expanding the sugarcane farm. We still have a little bit of the last corner over here to do, but then we'll be just about good for infinite sugarcane. And you're kind of intruding my commentary here, good sir. But of course, the issue here is that we don't have any cows, and with it we can't get any leather for books. So we'll have to figure that out later. As for now, I say we head back down to the mines a little bit and try to get some more iron. And man, I gotta say, it is quite slow going down those stairs. We'll have to do something more efficient if we stay here as time goes on. And unfortunately, I do think that we kind of have wiped up all the ores from the surrounding area, so it might be a better use of our time to head back up and think about what we can do in the following day. I guess we won't be having to put any stairs into this area, so I think that I'm gonna make ourselves some more bread and nom 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 away. Now as the sun rises, I think that I've come up with a plan. We still desperately need a ton more iron, so I'm gonna go exploring, and hopefully we can find a cave around here to get some more iron. However, there is still one more thing that I want to do before we leave, and that involves that farmer villager behind me. Now I'm wondering if we can reset the trade because I don't think we've traded with him yet. Still only a potato trade, and potatoes are like the one crop that we don't have. But I'm gonna worry about that later. Right now our job is to get iron, so we'll take our crafting table with us and let's head off to find a cave. I gotta say, I really am enjoying my stay at Cameltopia this far. This playthrough is forcing me to play the game in such a different way, and I'm totally loving just figuring out how to get the basics. Now we're not having too much luck with the caves, but I do see a little entrance right here, so let's see if we can find anything good. Well, just a creeper friend. Maybe we can get some gunpowder out of this. Easy peasy. I'm seeing some coal around here too. A little bit of copper, but no iron yet. Just a skeleton. And we're gonna have to be careful. I forgot a shield here. I swear, without a shield, everything is way too close for comfort. It looks like there's something of too much use in this cave, so we're gonna have to go find a new one. If I can find my way out, that is. Now, getting out of that cave was a lot harder than I would like to admit. And we do have a villager over there in the distance. I'm not sure if we've gone to it yet, but we really are ill-equipped for the journey. I'm gonna eat some more bread, we're gonna head back to Cameltopia, and then we're gonna try to find some ores in the ocean. And Dorothy, our beautiful gal, is looking wonderful over there on the hilly mountainside. I really can't wait to build a larger-than-life structure of her later on. And it looks like Bula has lost their job profession. Now she's a mason. We don't want you to be that either, gal. And I'm not really sure where she got the mason block from. I guess from the stone cutter. Now let's see if we can try once again with the composter. And it looks like still no luck. This day is starting to become a total waste. Place down a crafting table and we'll take our planks, make a set of oak doors, and craft up our first shield. We can put that in our offhand. And I say we head off to the sea to see if we can get ourselves some sea booty. And I gotta say, I really do love the desert sunsets. I think they're so pretty. It's really awesome to be making an oasis in such a beautiful landscape. And as the moon rises, I don't think we want to take any chances tonight. I'm gonna head to sleep. Alright, day 14 and we have some iron to iron. I mean some iron to mine. <laughs> Y'all know what I meant. But anyways, I really want to have an iron farm up by day 25. And so we've really got to start buckling down. Let's hop into the drink and it looks like we do have a ravine right here. And it's probably best to fuel up before we head down. Now let's see how far this goes. Well, the answer is not as far as I would like. But I'm hoping that this cave is a good entry point to the rest of the deeper mines down here. So I say let's try to start mining into the cave right here. And hopefully we can open up on something awesome. I didn't think it was going to happen so soon, but it looks like we're already back at work staircasing down. And it looks like we've stumbled into a cave. And with it, we have a little bit of an enderman friend. But I'm not going to pay him any mind at the moment. Because it looks like we have a bogey in sight. And let's keep on... And more! I guess no need to go anywhere, Slip. We found what we're looking for. And I'll take you. And there's a whole lot of you too. Oh my goodness. That already brings us up to 23 iron. And I see a little bit more as we make our way into the big cave. And another bogey. But not today, thank you. And you, sir, I am not worried at all. Nor you, sir. And I'll grab you. And you. And you. And you. And you. Oh my goodness. Look at these veins today. And that's 32 iron. And I see some more on the ceiling. And more on the walls. And now we're at 44. 45. And of course, while we're here, we might as well grab a quick bucket of lava here. And we got another bogey. And I'll take you as well. And now, if I'm being totally honest, I'm just trying to see if I can find some diamonds. But I'm always happy with more iron. Let's quickly make a furnace here. And we'll smelt up some more iron so that we can make an iron pickaxe. And while we're doing that, my head's just on a swivel looking for creepers. I guess we'll have to use up a little bit of our planks. We're out of coal. And we'll make one more iron pick. We'll need that crafting table. And I think I'm going to take a quick peek over at this big cave. And then we're going to dip. I definitely don't want to stay out here too long. Just a quick check for diamonds. And bounty acquired. And of course, we're blocked by an intruder more like a couple so let's grab this guy real quick and it looks like we're being hey i was gonna say i was happy 
Oh my, look at this vein. I was going to say that I was unhappy that my pick broke, but look at this. Now I think it's just about as good of a time as any to pillar back to the surface. I can't believe that we just got eight diamonds from that, and we've stumbled into an amethyst geode as well. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I don't think that this playthrough could get any luckier, and we're going to dig right through it to get back to the surface. I'm just mining a long way on a really long day. The zombies want to come and play. The zombies do want to come and play. I really wasn't expecting for this to happen. Get out of here, brethren. Say, let's pillar her back up for behind us to be safe. Might as well take a little bit of iron while we go up to make it worth it for our journey just a little bit. And, and we're slowly but surely making our way back to the surface. And I think that we've either found the same mine shaft or a different one. So it definitely couldn't hurt to grab some wood while we're at it. After we get rid of this guy, let's take out this skeleton right here too. I don't want any problems before we get any wood. Take some quick iron while we're at it too. And knowing the luck of the playthrough, we found an eight vein. Now let's quickly throw out some of the stuff that we don't need so that we can have the space to chop down some wood. And I don't think we've been here before. We do have a spider spawner. So let's definitely try to be careful and cautious about that as we go around here and it's lit up so i think that we're gonna be all right at the moment although i did hear spiders drop down somewhere look at that response time now here more spiders are spawning in so let's just take this wood real quick and then we're gonna get back out of here and our axe is broken anyway so i think that's a good sign as any to go we still have one door left so we're gonna use it to head up this water shaft and it looks like we have another bit of a water cave let's place it down real quick to get some oxygen and i'm not sure but i'm hoping we can explore our way to the surface and i think the answer is gonna be no but we are gonna grab this coal real quick so let's make a couple blocks we'll grab our door and mine up all this coal and so i'll grab it one more time and then we'll head over here and start pillaring up once again. I see some dirt. We'll throw away our andesite and some cobblestone. We can take out our dirt and it looks like we've finally gotten out and I see the surface. Let's just hope that we don't drown on the way up. And we're okay and it's daylight. Now talk about a successful caving trip. And so with our goodies in hand, I think it's best that we head back to Cameltopia and we'll take full stock of our spoils from there. And home sweet home, it feels good. You could say I'm returning like a total champion. It looks like our crops are growing nicely over here and our villager friend is still without a trade. And so I'm going to put away our stone blocks in this chest and get our iron smelting in the furnace. And we'll use our diamonds to make a pair of diamond leggings as well as a diamond shovel. Now cover me with diamonds, baby. And so I say, let's try again. We're going to head over to Bula and we'll place down our composter. And thankfully, we finally have a wheat trade, except for I think I'm actually going to do one better. Let's grab our materials, place down our stone cutter real quick. We're going to make a whole ton of sandstone and then maybe make some cut sandstone out of it. I think we'll head over in this direction and shovel out the area so that we can make a little bit of like a villager trading center. And this is going to be super makeshift at first, so you're going to have to forgive me. We'll go along the side just like this, go out a couple wide and try not to get too close in case that skeleton sees us. We'll keep on heading back this way. And of course we've been seen. So let's make an iron sword and an iron axe real quick. And now we're going to get rid of this pesky skeleton. And I don't want to hit the enderman while I do it. Now we're going to continue with our cut sandstone on the side right here. And we'll have the roof one up just like this. And actually I take it back. I think that we're going to make the roof out of glass. And so we can place down our composter over here. Lay down a bed as well. And the idea is that this place over here. Hold on, enchanted bow. It's getting a little bit stickier than I thought it was going to. Let's retreat back real quick to get some food. A num num. Num 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 Die, brethren! Die, brethren! Ah, get out of here, Skeletor. And a third one, you don't want to mess with these, these juking skills. But anyway, this area right here will be a place where we can house some villagers, we can breed them up, we'll eventually get our iron farm settled right over here, and maybe we'll make this into a fancy villager trading hall later. But right now, I'm getting plagued by mobs. These are my land, spider fellow, not yours. And we're out of food, I think it's time to retreat. But gosh, I do feel safer in diamond armor. Let's get our sand smelting, and we're gonna make six chests for hoppers. And let's grab the hoppers. We can place them in this chest for later. We're gonna have to head back to the mine shaft and no Order to get some signs and maybe some trapdoors for the iron farm. So as the sun rises on day 16, I think that I've come up with a game plan. We're going to spend the day to try to get some villagers into our holding chamber. And then Dorothy and I are going to go on an adventure to another village so that we can get some beds. We're going to need at least three more since we don't have a sheep in order to make the iron farm. And I can't wait to go on another adventure with you girl. But I say let's get to work at getting these villagers out. We'll take your bed here and I want you to be coming this way. And I forgot how long those take to block. All right. And it's still working. We'll move it along this this way. All right, all right. And what about here? Seamless, I'm telling you. I'm definitely gonna jinx myself. And so now we'll go right here. All right, all right, all right. And now what about in here? Okay, perfect. We'll place down your bed right here. And I'm okay with you being a farmer if you're gonna sell beetroot. I say let's lock that in real quick. We'll head back to the cabin and get some beetroot. And we might as well try to get you while we're at it. And it seems like villager pathfinding is in our favor today. All right, all right, all right. And you just walked right in here too. That honestly couldn't have been easier. Let's lock in this trade with Selena. 
And what a deal, perfect. I am gonna light up this surrounding area real quick, but I gotta say that that is huge for the game plan. Now let's head off to find Dorothy. Dorothy, my girl, it's time for an adventure. And if I do recall, there's a village over in this direction, so why don't we head this way? And it looks like my hunch was correct. Now I know that I could have used fabric waystones to get here, but it's so close and I really wanted to go on an adventure with Dorothy. I mean, Cameltopia is gonna be all about Dorothy, so I think it's fitting to ride her as much as possible. Now, hello, villager friends. There are... There really are a lot of you here. I'm just gonna be stealing your beds. I hope that you don't mind. There's like 30 villagers, but like two beds here. I really don't understand how it's possible. I would like to have one more bed, but I guess we'll make do with what we have. Or it's time for Dorothy and I to head back home. And I don't know, it might just be the fact that I've never ridden a camel before, but I feel like Dorothy is really fast. Thanks for bringing me home, girl. We'll leave you right here. And now it's just about time to get to villager breeding. But that's of course gonna start with harvesting some crops. Oh, hey there, Dorothy. It's so nice to have you here while I'm harvesting these crops. I'll let you work and I'll just keep on grinding on. And with just that one harvest, we had enough seeds to plant the whole field. And looking at it all put together with Dorothy right here it makes me a very happy man. Now we'll head on over to the villager breeder. And even without me doing anything, it looks like they've made a child. We'll place down a couple more beds here. And we'll also get to harvesting our sugar cane. Woohoo, a bogey! Good thing I have my wits about me. And keep on coming this way, sir. Dorothy, don't get too close to him. Well, we got out of it unscathed, but the land didn't. We'll have to fix that later. Right now, we're gonna keep on harvesting sugar cane. And not bad, we got about about three and a half stacks from that. I say that we fill in the last little bit as well. Now that looks good to go. We can also feed the sandwich real quick. A yum 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 yum. And it looks like we're just about ready to have a stable food source. I guess we do anyway with the villager farmer that we have. But we'll drop off our materials real quick. Maybe craft up a little bit more bread too. And place the first layer of sand on the villager breeder as the moon sets. But I don't really think that this is going to get us very far. Yep, just about to there. We'll get some more sand later and fix it up. But since we have nothing really else to do for the night, I might as well hit the hay. And on the morning of day 17, we'll get to a breeding. And that's what I like to see. Now I'm going to leave you all to do your thing, and we'll check in later. For now, our plan is to head back to the mine shaft. I really want to get this iron farm build started by day 20, and I think that the only way to do that is to get our trapdoors now. We will make just a couple bit more torches. We'll take out our water bucket as well to be safe. And let's head back down this terrible waterfall once again. I guess it can't hurt to get this gold while we're here. And I see two skeleton boga friends. And I'll put you to rest. And we'll have to get rid of you as well. And we have made a return. Hopefully no bogeys wait on the other end, and it looks like we're in the clear for now. Now I say that since we're here, why don't we try to get as much wood as we can, and maybe get these railings as well to help with villager transportation. I feel like there could be a bogey around here. Let's carefully grab as many wooden planks as we can. We have spotted a spawner down here, which could be very helpful going forward, actually. I don't think I've ever been so nervous collecting wood. I mean, I hear endermen all around me. I don't know what mobs could be around the corner. This is a well worth an adventure, but it couldn't be more scary at the same time. Some more railings will come in handy too, and even more over here. And I'll never say no to some gold, but I gotta say it feels like this mine shaft goes on forever. But it does look like we have stumbled into a mine cart with the chest. I think that will grab this lava. I feel like it's so satisfying when it boils down like this. And we can head over to the chest and see what we get. A name tag will be huge for the iron farm. And some glow berries, a little bit more iron, and some melons as well. I think we'll take just about all of this. And with all these spoils in hand, I think it is just about time to head back to the surface once again, like a little wimp. And by like a wimp, I mean by staircasing all the way back to the top. And it can't hurt to find a little bit more iron as well. I mean, getting some extra experience can't really hurt either. Gosh, I hate those scary cave sounds. And we are back at the sand layers. And this comes out right next to Dorothy. Hey there, girl. Did you miss me? I missed you too. But I think it would be nice to head back down to this mine shaft because this is where the spider spawner is going to be. So let's pull her up and make a little bit of like an arch or something like that with some deep slate. I mean, that looks fine to me right now. And we might as well light up the area a little bit too. We're totally going to have to come back here and make an XP spawner. Now let's head on over to the villager trading den and see if we can't do some trades. So only one emerald at the moment, but that's okay. Unlimited emeralds will come with time. Now let's head back to our house and drop off our materials. We'll also get that gold smelting and craft up some trapdoors for the iron farm. We'll place the trapdoors with some signs and our railings in here. I guess it wouldn't hurt to add the name tag as well. We can smelt up that iron as well, and it looks like we have a total of 16 gold ingots at the moment. I do quickly think it would be a good idea to plant these melon seeds. That way we can slowly and surely keep expanding on the farm. Now this creeper hole actually gives us a wonderful excuse to dig down. We're going to want a ton of sand and sandstone to finish off the villager breeder as well as make our iron farm. So we might as well shape this area of the land as well. It's kind of funny to me. I actually thought I would have accrued all of this sand already. 
I mean, we're living in a desert only biome, but at the moment it seems like we have more deep slate and cobblestone than we do sand. And who knows, maybe we'll do something with this area in the future. Maybe we can make like a giant like mine shaft or something like that. I feel like this should be good enough for now, but I do have to make this even right here. If not, it's going to mess with me. And now we'll have to terraform this a little bit in too. And so now we have this giant pit for resource collection, but we're out of food, so we're going to have to walk on over to our house. We'll make our last, last bit of bread for the playthrough at least, and then use our lava bucket to start smelting up some glass. I'm gonna make up a chest. You know, while we're here, we might as well start making ourselves a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. 10 pieces of peanut butter and jelly. And I think that that'll have to do as well. Maybe 12. And so I'm gonna light up this area because I think that we're gonna house our iron farm right here. And we'll get rid of some baddies while we're at it. But you broke my shield, sir. Not cool. Not cool at all. And I caused a whole avalanche. But I think that this area should be okay to clear out. And we might as well make it a little bit easier to access while we're at it. And so we can place down our double chest right here. We'll put in some sandstone. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start making an iron farm. Now I'll be following a waddles tutorial. And I've made it plenty of times in the past. But it usually seems to mess up on me. The zombie always burns. So please have your fingers crossed that it works for me. And give the video a like while you're at it. I mean, if you're liking it, of course. And we'll be doing this cinematic style. So as always... Make it good, editor slip. Psych. I think that I actually want to bring you all through this build. Goodbye. That way we'll be able to go through all the twists and turns together. So let's start with eating some food. And now in this area right here, we're going to pull her up 15 times. And we have quite a nice view of Cameltopia right here. The next goal is going to be to make a column that leads up to this area. And we'll definitely have to be a little bit more careful this time. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We're going to have to head back to the house to get some more materials. Make the last, last, last bread of the series. Let's gobble that up real quick. Wrap our glass while we're at it. And we'll start to expand on the platform. We'll go three out this way on either side. And a third time right here. We'll have a temporary block right here. And then start to pile in our glass on the sides. We can now remove the temporary block. And it might be helpful to place a temporary block right here, right here, and right here. That way we can use the block to help us make glass around the area. And we'll do the same thing for all three sides. There are two reasons to use glass here. The first one is because you can see into the iron farm and the second is because glass is a non-spawnable block meaning that iron golems can't spawn on these blocks right here i'm gonna break out the corner blocks here but unfortunately we have run out of glass so we're gonna head back over to our cabin sorry i was just building a cabin in my hardcore series i mean desert den and we'll pick up with the project in the following morning right now we need to get rid of some intruders and it looks like the wandering trader has come i did read somewhere that wandering traders take potions of invisibility at night but we can be sure to click on him if i can find him and it looks like he is birch saplings as well. Now we gotta buy that ASAP. Ladies and gentlemen, on day 19, everything is changing. Let's go and grab our emeralds. We have five. Let's definitely harvest as much beetroot as we can real quick. There's no time for re-harvesting right now. And I'm just grabbing all of it like a madman. And talk about demolition. We'll go and wake up our farmer. And that's gonna do us for a couple saplings. And it's unfortunate that you can't get us today, Mr. Husk friend. And I had figured that that would spawn in an iron golem as well. It looks like these guys are protected from now on. Now let's go and get some saplings. Mr. Wandering Tree. Later, I have something for you. And we'll get three from that, as well as some poisoning from a husk. Let's see, do you have anything else that we might desperately need? Just some dyes and a bucket of puffer fish. Looks not. And I say, let's get to planting that tree right away. Gosh, that is a good feeling. And while we have time, we might as well replant our crops. But gosh, now I can't stop thinking about all of the possibilities we have with the playthrough. And honestly, talk about perfect time with setting up villager trades. Okay, and the field is reharvested, and it looks even prettier with the birch saplings. But we do have some more crops over here, so I'm wondering. Maybe we can harvest these two and get some extra saplings from the wandering trader. I mean, there's only one way to find out. It's also kind of crazy to think about the fact that we ended up getting that beetroot trade off of the first roll from that villager. And I'm even more glad to get saplings because we are just about out of storage space. And I really didn't want to have to use these oak planks yet. We are going to have to use some coal, however, because I do want some more glass. And I say that we make one more furnace while we're at it so that we can smelt up some raw pork chops. And man, this place is starting to get cramped. So we're going to have to move out of it soon. Now it is officially day 20, meaning that we are one fifth of the way through the series and i sure am happy with everything that we've accomplished thus far now we'll head over to our farmer friend and trade their emeralds with the toolsmith to level up a little bit now i think i've come up with a big brain move we'll start off with throwing away our stone pickaxes and then we'll head into this chest and we'll grab our bones we'll then make some bone meal out of that as well as take out our axe and start bone mealing these trees and there you have it and hopefully we can get one more tree here too perfect and what about a third one now that's what i'm talking about now we'll chop down these 
these bad boys. And it is one good feeling to have wood. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just so happy to have these trees, but they look kind of odd in the desert. And now we just have to have our eyes peeled for some saplings. And there you have it. With four saplings in her hand and Dorothy hanging out right beside us, I think that we can say that we're good to go for the playthrough. And we might as well try with these two other bone meal, but no luck. Although we're getting plenty more saplings from this. We'll place down one right here. And I'm going to keep waiting around just in case we can get some more because I want to get this wood situation solved as soon as possible. And in retrospect, I'm so happy that I didn't do a cinematic. In a series just like this, you miss out on so many of the important details. And we've gotten two more saplings. I'm going to place down one right here and maybe one right here. We'll of course replant the seeds in the soil. And my oh my, we already have another tree. That brings us up to 22 total saplings. We are going to be good to go. And I say while we wait, why don't we harvest a little bit more sugar cane? I don't think I've ever been this lucky in a playthrough before. Now before the sun sets, I think I want to hop in here. We'll craft up some paper and then make a cartography table, which we're going to try to switch out for the mason right here. We'll drop down this guy right here and place down the cartography table. And it seems like Dennis has grown up to give us a paper trade. I'm going to make a crafting table and it looks like we already had one, but that's okay because we have plenty of wood now. We'll make a boatload of paper and we'll start to get Dennis leveled up. And we got eight emeralds from that. That makes me a happy man. I think that we're going to head over to the wandering trader and see if he has anything else good for us. Not exactly sure how I'd get cyan dye, so I might as well get a little bit. And so we'll place down our stone cutter right next to the iron farm, put some of the materials in the chest, maybe keep the sand on us, and trade with our toolsmith to maybe get an iron trade soon. And Bula's about to level up. It's your glow up day, Bula. Ooh, -ah, ooh, -ah. And you better give me an iron trade. And there we go, we're locked in. Perfect, I would consider that a big win. However, I'm gonna throw away these stone axes. We really don't need them. And actually, I think I'm gonna craft up a little bit more paper to get one more round of trading in before nightfall. I think that since these trees are growing in so fast, I'm going to harvest this wheat and then we'll take the dirt and replace it with sand so that we can space it out a little bit around here. And this way we'll have more space to plant saplings. Yeah, good try, friend. If I can hit my shots. And today is not your day, Zomatron. However, I do think I hear a baby. Whatever, we'll just chop down these trees and have our wits about us. And there's a showdown. It smacked, Zomatron. Also, I think I have one more big brained idea. Just so we can put away all of the stuff that we don't need. And then we're going to take all the beetroot seeds and we'll We'll head over to the mini trading hall to compost them up and I think that this is gonna work and it will. This way we're gonna be able to get a ton of trees as soon as possible. And man that was close. It feels even better knowing that there's an iron golem around me to protect me too. And the beautiful sun is rising which tells me that we're on to day 21. And it looks like on this 21st day of the playthrough we're gonna expand our tree farm and then probably expand our iron farm as well. So we'll place you here and you here and then we'll take our 12 bone meal. Let's see how many it takes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that took all of our bone meal, but at least we got two more trees out of it. And of course, we'll hang over here and stay posted for saplings. We might as well see if there are any more over here too. It looks like we have one more. And we have another one from over here, so one and two. And I figure while I'm waiting, I might as well get a little bit more sand for glass. I feel like every second counts in a 100 days. And these things right here are actually earthworms. And if I eat one, it gives me the poison effect and it makes me feel like I'm dry. But we can head over to the mini villager breeder. Hey, Dorothy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling all woozy. <laughs> and I just learned that they can actually be composted, which might be a very helpful thing in this playthrough. And we have a couple more saplings dropping. We'll of course place them right back down. And since we still have the sun in the sky, I think that we're going to head over to the iron farm after getting our glass from the house. And let's get back to work at creating this essential farm. Now we're going to go up one more with our glass, making for a stack of three glass blocks tall. Making for a vertical stack of three glass blocks tall. Now we're going to break out and replace these three middle blocks with a temporary block and place a water source on the inside right here so that the zombie doesn't burn. Now to get this ready for holding a zombie, we're going to place some temporary blocks in these ends right here. We'll take our sand so that our zombie can get up, and then we'll use our crafting table to make some trapdoors, which we can place down to capture the zombie. And of course we want it down so that he goes in. I'm going to place some temporary planks down just to make it easier. We're not going to be getting the villagers till later. And then make a little platform so that it's easier for me to capture the zombie. It'll be too tall, and the idea will be that the zombie follows me along this path right here. And then I'll come along here. I'll hop up right here, maybe one more, while flipping this oak trap door. And the zombie will fall in, and the zombie will fall in and be trapped forever. Now we are lucky enough to have gotten a name tag, so let's go find that. And we'll make an anvil so that we can name tag this zombie. So let's close the door, we'll hop into this anvil, and we're going to name our zombie Frank. The reason being, I'm a big fan of disruptive builds, and he has a create mod series where he named his zombie Frank. And since I wanted to put Frank in this world, I did the same. And so let's clear out our inventory real quick. And really quickly, before I forget, I say let's craft up another shield. It looks like our boots have broken as well, so let's 
close the door once again, and we'll craft up one more pair. Now before we try to get a zombie, the one last thing I do want to do is try to light up this area a little bit. That way we won't have to worry about mob spawns in the future. However, there are a whole ton of mobs around here, so I say we just start our hunt to find a zombie, and I guess this will be good experience while we're at it. And to our luck, it looks like a zombie has spawned in right here. Let's num 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 num. And you sir, are now named Frank. And Frank, my good fellow, you're coming with me. You have a job, my good man. A very important job too. You sir, are in charge of getting us infinite iron for the rest of the playthrough. Now that's a big task, can you handle it? But you sir, you need to leave. You need to get out of the way. But Frank, thanks for the love tap. And a really inopportune time to come in phantoms. Now I got husks coming in too. You know, this has gotten quite stressful and even more spawned in. And I think that we're gonna have to get Frank inside or something like that because the sun is just about to come out and I don't want to lose this fellow. So Frank, if you will, please follow me. We'll head on through here. And Frank, please stay there. The sun's come up. Okay, we've trapped Frank for the night. And the question is, can I sleep real quick? Well, not a total mission failure, but I think that our project's gonna have to wait a night or two because we'll want to get rid of the phantom situation. For now, the plan is gonna be to chop down these trees and then we're gonna head to one more village to try to get some more beds. That way we'll get one step closer to having an awesome trading situation. Well Dorothy! Off we go on another adventure girl. And I gotta say it really is nice having three villages nearby where I'm really dying to get two sheep. And so I think that later on in the playthrough, probably after we've beaten the ender fight, we'll do some more exploring and try to get ourselves some more sheep. But for now I'm gonna take this sir and take both of you. I'm sorry but it's dearly needed. And we'll hop back on Dorothy to continue working on the iron farm. Okay, Dorothy, we can get out of this. And give me one of your best jumps, girl. Oh, you're so smart. You found the way. You're the smartest girl, Dorothy. And we know it's home because we can see the iron farm in the distance. And it's dutifully guarded by our iron golem friend. Although he kind of looks intimidating. And the sugar cane is growing well, along with our beetroot. But we'll drop off Dorothy, go read some books, girl, and get back to work on the iron farm after we eat some lunch. And by get back to work, I really don't mean too much. We'll take out these planks real quick. So place a bed facing towards the zombie. And then place a job block right next to it. And there's the second bed, and the second composter, and the third bed with the third composter. We're also going to want a torch on each one of these ends right here. And I've also gotten the other two sides ready for the villagers later. But it is once again nighttime, so we're going to get out Frank and try this whole ordeal one more time after getting rid of this guy. And I say we take out you long range today. And you dropped some gunpowder as well. Thank you for the donation. And it does look like we're level 25. We're getting close to enchanting levels. But once again, let's go to get out Frank. Frank, are you ready? Frank, Time for the farm, my friend. And please follow me this way. And I forgot about the phantoms. Let's make this one quick. And this dang phantom just can't figure out my location. I think we're just gonna try it with Frank. Come on this way, buddy. All right, we got a block in our hand. We got Frank behind us. Let's head up here. We'll open the trap door. And Frank's just falling right in. Perfect. We'll close that bad boy. We'll get rid of the trap door and place a solid block on top of it. And now we can get rid of all the planks. And before I forget, I'm gonna replace this crafting table with deep slate. Might as well finish the rest of this in two. All right, a couple cool skulls there but Frank is okay and good to go and that's really all that matters at the moment and so as the sun starts to rise on day 23 I'm still feeling satisfied and somehow somewhere we've got it a potato now that is one of the biggest things that I wanted to find Let's plant it down right here. Now this place is really going to become an oasis, but I think it's going to be of utmost importance to reharvest our crops. And now we can chop down some trees. And yes, I am using stone axes right now. You see, we only have five iron left. And since we're so close to the iron farm, I just don't want to waste any more. We'll take our seeds to the composter. And while we do that, we want to breed up some more villagers. So we'll use our iron to make one more smithing table. And hopefully we can get a baby out of this. And don't mind me, I'm just going to be composting over here. Stop pushing me out of the way. And it looks like we got 15 bone meal out of that. But no little kiddos, I wonder why that is. What happens if I toss my bread as well? Maybe that'll be enough to hold them over. If not, y'all are just hungry people. And there we have it. Alright, while y'all are busy, I'm gonna continue on with the ceiling here. And I still don't think we're gonna have enough glass to finish it. And man, love is in the air tonight. But you kinda seem mad at me as well. I'm not really sure what to think of that. <laughs> I can feel the coming in the air it's in. nothing's gonna happen and we'll use planks to fill in for the moment shoot and you're all out hopefully you'll come back when the sun sets and into bed you go now let's harvest some sugar cane for some more trades i don't really know if this is because this is like the first time i've focused on harvesting sugar cane but it sure seems to grow fast i mean i'm not complaining but it sure seems to grow fast we'll craft up a whole boatload of paper and we'll trade it with you sir thank you very much for your business 
I'll let you go back to sleep. And we got 12 emeralds from that. Now, the one thing is I did forget to get the saplings, but fortunately I've made dumber mistakes and we have bone meal to fix them. And the problem has been resolved. Now let's get rid of this guy real quick out of my territory and we'll bone meal these taters so that we can get expanded on the farm. We're also going to take a ton of wheat and make it into bread. Not for me this time, but for the villagers. And we'll also drop off some materials while we're at it. We'll craft up a ton of paper. And before the new day starts, I think that we're going to try to sneak in here and get in a couple more trades, except for the fact that we're locked out. But we still have plenty of seeds in hand, so I say, why don't we start bone mealing? Now, this is kind of a sticky situation, but I think we're going to finagle our way out of it, dear skeleton. You are doomed, my good friend. A good omen for day 24. I think that I'm going to make a barrel real quick, the first of the series, and place it down right here. And now that it's day, we're going to toss a ton more bread their way. Bup, 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 bup. Ours. And an enderman behind me. Now make a kiddo, please. And I'm gonna try to steal one more bed while we're at it. Now I'm gonna break into your house and I really don't care what happens to you. You make your way over to the trading hall that's more than okay with me. And let's place down one more bed. And maybe I'll make your floor something nicer as well. And I feel like that looks a little bit nicer, doesn't it? But you're still not making babies. We're gonna have to figure out why. And I think that we're gonna take even one more bed while we're at it. And toss even more bread in their direction. And this is the last of the wheat that I have, so let's hope that this works. And here goes nothing. Come on, how hungry can you be? Are you just throwing it all away? I guess we'll have to check back in later. For now, I say let's keep on expanding the potatoes. And now that's really not looking too bad. And it looks like we have a little bit of a desert storm coming in too. Kind of cool and ominous looking, if I must say. And so I've done a little bit of research on why my villagers aren't making any babies. And you, Samuel, which is my real life name, have to go. Am I killing real life me? Let me know in the comments. I'm so sorry, Samuel. And you, my dear friend, will also have to go. Don't look at me like that. It was for the cause. Drop a like for me killing my real life self. But we're going to try it again. We're going to harvest these crops right here. And hopefully we'll actually get some babies this time. I'm really happy I did the troubleshooting early on that one. That could have been a total bummer. And night quickly approaches. We may have run out of time. And I do think we have. And it looks like a phantom squad is coming. I'm going to try to take him on tonight. If we can get ourselves a phantom membrane or two. And it's going to help having an iron column friend on our side too. Yeah, take him out, man. Take them out. 0 for 1 and 0 for 2. Let's see if our paper trade has refreshed. And it looks like we have 8 more emeralds from that. And we'll put the beetroots in this chest for later. And actually, I'm going to head back in here, not just because the phantoms are coming back in, but because we can once again bone meal our seeds. And 4 bone meal in total from that. And so while we're chased by phantoms, I'm going to head over to all the other houses, make sure that there aren't any other villagers here, and steal any beds that I can find. Because as cruel as that sounds, I need all of my villagers in one location. <laughs> there we go. Take them out. And so we have one one more bed we're gonna place it down and i'm gonna keep this last one for myself and i do actually want to craft the blast furnace but we only have three iron ingots so i hate to have to do this but mr iron golem you're gonna have to go and you will too there creeper friend unless i can steal the iron and dip and our first phantom membrane and that's two for the books right there let's see if we can get a third and it looks like two total so i might as well try to sneak in here and then sneak out because we don't have the materials that we need we need to smelt some stone for an iron furnace <laughs> Can't get me. And then we'll take a regular cobblestone to craft a furnace, which we can then use to craft a blast furnace. It looks like it may be a new day, but there are still phantoms in the sky because today looks like an ominous, ominous desert storm. And there he burns in the sky. All right, so we can break back in here and we'll place down a blast furnace. And now it's all up to you to make some babies. And of course y'all got out again. I mean, while you're out here, might as well try to get you to breed. And that's what I'm talking about. And there should be enough beds in there for that baby villager to go inside. So as long as we see something happen right here we'll be in good luck and still nothing's happened I'm re i really don't know why though i'm not really sure what to think my only thought is to expand the ceiling and maybe wait for a cooldown because i just killed the last villagers so we'll get to doing that real quick and we'll add some extra texture with some birch slabs and then do the painstakingly annoying process of breaking glass blocks well i gotta say it does look a lot better in here but that still hasn't solved our problem we still need two more villagers in order to make an iron farm so i say that we harvest our crops once again and it looks like we have a baby villager. I didn't even have to give any more crops, but we're gonna need to anyway. And I don't care if it's all the beetroot. Please make one more baby for me. I don't care how long it takes. I'm gonna do some beetroot and while we're at it. And we got 17 bone meal from that. I feel like this composting strategy is really paying off. And so I'm gonna head to sleep as well because I'm really not sure where that baby villager went. And it's worth sacrificing a day after such a big win. And there he goes. We have one, two, three, four. And we just need one fifth villager in order to make this work. We'll once again re-harvest our sugar 
Burger King, and it is officially day 26 of the playthrough. And I gotta say, it really is pretty in the desert, especially when you're making an oasis out of it. And it looks like our first melon has grown as well. I say let's craft the sugar cane into paper, and then we can take out our axe to harvest the melons. I think that we'll plant down some more melon seeds right here. And of course, we'll replant the potatoes. I think we might as well bone meal the melons right here. And this way, we'll have easy access melons going forward. We can replenish our paper trade. Thank you for your business, Dennis. And I see you're leveling up too. Awesome. And it looks like you're selling glass for emeralds too. I'll count that as another win. And speaking of glass panes, I think I'm actually going to craft some up. That way, we'll be able to look inside the villager breeder without any babies going out. I think that I'm going to make some charcoal while we're at it too. Our end goal may be to get a lava farm or something like that. But charcoal is the best smelting alternative. And we do have an infinite wood source now. So I think that this is okay. We now have 29 emeralds. And since the sun is starting to set, we might as well start off with these 21 glass blocks. And look how cute. We have three baby villagers right there. Perfect. We're going to be good to go with the iron farm. And not bad. We got three out of the four sides. And I'll open up the door right here so that our baby villagers can walk their way back inside. They really are so cute. I have a strong feeling they'll head inside once the sun sets, but I really like how they kind of scuttle around. And it's nice to take a break from the grind for a second just to watch them play around. We have Clifton right here. This little guy is named Maple. And then we have little Margaret in the bed right here. And I assure you that the three of you are going to have a big future. We'll harvest up this field as night sets in. And then we'll use those seeds to start replenishing the field. I didn't really realize that I shouldn't have composted them. But we have the villagers that we need, so it shouldn't really matter at this point. And we have even more melons which is nice to have as a food source as well. But that actually reminds me that we should feed the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And it looks like there's still plenty of you too. That makes me a happy man. And so to prepare for the next day, I think that we're going to take out all of our railings and we'll take out our gold to make a couple of powered railings too along with our redstone, and we'll make 12 powered railings, and we have 53 rails. So I say let's start making a little bit of a highway that stretches over from our villager breeder over to the iron farm, so that we can get to transporting these villagers a little bit more easily. And it looks like we've run into some scum. Come back over here, and you can get sliced by my sword. And we have another bogey over here. Let's get this one back from the other one with the enchanted bow. And you've fallen into my trap. Goodbye, sir. So we can put down our railing, and there's a baby husk following us. Let's eat real quick, and we'll get down on the ground level to take him out. And just a bit of poisoning can't really hurt us now. Alright, and so our railway is complete. Or now it's complete. But we do need a minecart. Which means we need a little bit more iron. So once again, I'm sorry to have to do this, but you're gonna have to go. And of course we need one more iron in order to do it. Let's see if we have anything left in here. And no iron left for the slip man. Let's see, do we have any more iron golems around here? It looks not, so we're gonna try to get some real quick. Let's grab a bucket of water real quick. And then we'll dip on down into the caves. And it looks like I've already found some. So it looks like we can just stair down right here and we'll have enough iron to go that really couldn't have worked out more perfectly but of course we're still gonna have to wait for these guys to grow up and suffice it to say i didn't get the iron farm completed but i think that's okay because we're still making really good progress and we have four iron smelted down in the blast furnace we can make ourselves a mine cart and maybe get to work at transporting these villagers i think that i'm gonna take you in my boat and let's see if we can't get you into the mine cart so close and of course they're wandering around and i can get them anywhere except for the mine cart but i figure maybe i can try to trap one of you in a boat right now and we'll get you as close as we can as well as place a couple of job blocks down before the sun sets and so i might as well bring the railway all the way inside and so with our villager right here i think that we might as well sleep for the night and get a head start on the following day well hello i'm not really sure how you showed up but that's more than okay with me now we're gonna break your job blocks over here and i really have no idea how that villager showed up but let's see what we can't do in order to get these villagers up in their cells that is the wrong way my good friend so i'm gonna take three beds then oops sorry and it looks like you're getting the hang of things so what yeah okay so we may be able to get one right now come on maple i believe in you and it does look like she responds to a smithing table except for uh, i now i don't know where she went uh, and she fell down man and we're gonna try it again and it looks like she sees this block right here and now she sees this one good Let's break this guy, and she'll keep going up. Now, this is what it's all about. Slow and steady, right into your chamber. And perfect, that's one in. And it looks like we have another one coming along this way. This actually might be working out better out than I thought. But the sun is setting, so I do think that we're gonna have to wait for the next day. And off to sleep we go. Sweet dreams. All right, it's a new day, and you're gonna work with me, right? I'm not sure what that means, Dennis, but it's not looking good, Dennis. I think I might have to break the cartographer's table. And let's see if this works. All right, cartographer's ta table is broken. Let's see, do you take the job block? 
work. Now, what if I take the job block and then I place down the job block here? You know, I'm not liking what I'm seeing, Dennis. How are you telling me that no one wants to get out? There we go. Now, I don't care if you breed. What I care is that you get in the iron farm. Okay, I feel like this one might work. Let's put another composter right on top of this smithing table. Drop that guy down. All right. And now we just push you in just a little by little. Okay, and that's two. That's a good feeling. And I still hear the sounds of Frank, so that's a good sign too. And we may be seeing success with our last villager, Dennis, too. I've got my fingers crossed. You just gotta get off this table. And we've got you up there. We just gotta push you in. And there we go with three. Well done, you boy slip. I think that will take this down now that we have three villagers in there. And we won't be needing you much longer, good sir. And we'll also place some slabs right here to prevent any mob spawning. And man, look how cool everything looks as the sun sets in the distance. Really not too shabby slip. And we're also gonna take our trapdoors. We'll replace these with cobblestone in case we ever need to get back to them. Now, I don't want to waste any time on this playthrough, so we're going to head on over to our house to drop off our items. We'll head on over to the peanut butter jelly sandwich while we're at it, and we'll smelt that up really quickly. We're also going to get around to chopping more trees, as well as our melons, at least until our axe gives out, that is, and then get to replanting our field. We'll also place down a couple more dirt blocks and get to expanding our tree farm, and harvest ourselves a bit more sugar cane. And you're going to have to go. However, that may have been for the worse. I can't see any of my villagers in the trading hall. Let's head to sleep and see what happens. Okay, and there they are. They were just sleeping. I, for whatever reason, I couldn't see them. Gonna head in here and we'll lock you in real quick. And we're gonna have to get you a little bit more food. Hopefully this helps out with the food situation. But we'll leave you be for the moment. Get up to some magic for me. Oh, now that's what I was talking about. And so we may as well continue on with the iron farm. So we can make some stone brick walls, take a load of cobble deep slate, and head on over to the iron farm. We'll make some cobble deep slate stairs as well. And now we'll be good to start building the upper platform of the build. We're gonna place down five stairs just like this and then a full block on the end. Didn't mean to put that one there. And one on this end too. And we'll fill in the ends here and here. Now we'll make some temporary blocks on the corners right here and we'll do it on all four ends. There's corner two, corner three, and corner four. And now we'll line the outer edges with stone walls and then on the side where the stairs are we'll have one more facing in on both sides just like this. And now we'll head back to the house to get our signs and hoppers and we'll grab one more bucket of water while we're at it. We're gonna place five signs all right next to one another just like this. I mean just like this. And now when we place down two water sources hopefully the signs should prevent the water from going down. And it looks like there is one little spot right here. Let's see if we can fix it with one more bucket of water. We'll grab you real quick and then place you right here. And that seems to work okay. And now we should be safe to take down our pillar. And so now we'll head to the bottom to make ourselves a little bit of a platform so that we can catch the drops. And so we'll make two more chests. We'll put them right here and we'll have six hoppers going into them. Later on we'll expand to nine. And now we'll keep on filling this out. We also have eight pieces of glass, so we're gonna try to use these two. And the rest we're gonna fill in with sandstone. Now we'll take a quick bite to eat. Nom nom nom, nom nom nom, and craft up even more signs, and we'll layer them up once again just like this. And on the morning of day 31, our iron farm is looking good to go. We just need one more thing, a lava bucket. Thankfully, I know that there's a lava pool in this direction. So let's grab a bucket of lava. I'll take you and you, and we'll head back to you. Although you seem to be having a water problem, but that's gonna be a problem for a future slip. But right now we're gonna place this lava bucket in the middle, and hopefully it should spread around everything and... Not on the other side. I think I might have to place it one lower. Now let's try that one more time. All right, and that's looking much better. So the last thing to do is gonna be to pillar up here and take out these sand blocks that we have here on the side. That's gonna cause the villagers to freak out, which will cause an iron golem to spawn in. And we already have some iron in the chest. I'm gonna hang around for a minute to make sure that it's working. But if it is, we have a huge head start on this playthrough. And I do wanna see if putting some trapdoors on the back right here will stop the water. And it looks like it does. Splendid. And so far, the lava farm is a success. It looks like nothing's happening at the moment, but we already have expanded with the hoppers on the sides right here. And that's just with using the iron that we've gotten from the iron golems. We have no iron in here at the moment, but I feel confident that we'll get more as the playthrough continues. So we'll quickly, so we're going to make one more iron pickaxe, and we'll take out our emeralds to trade for a little bit more food before we set our sights on a spider spawner. Now since we have iron figured out, we'll be good in that situation, and we'll be wonderful for trades. And I did forget, we did just use our farmer for the iron farm. So we'll leave you in here for the moment, we'll head back to the house and we'll craft up some birch planks which we're then gonna put into ladders and I feel like 57 should be enough. We'll grab this beetroot, replace the emeralds for the moment before we go to work on the spider spawner. I think it's gonna be important to have some food while we do it and by food I really just mean a peanut butter and jelly sandwich but I think maybe we'll let you breed up a little bit more and we'll come back. 
But right now we're going to chomp on some beetroot. So the game plan is going to be to get as close to it as we can. We'll make a quick scumpus right here. And then we'll get in the middle of two blocks right here to start digging down. I say while we do this, we might as well light up the area and bring our ladders back up too. And it does look like this spawner is quite close to the surface as well. I would consider it another total win. And we have stumbled upon a cave right here. But we're just going to keep pillaring down. Hopefully we can bypass it on our way to the spawner. And some lapis lazuli. Along with some iron, I really can't complain about this. Our first lapis of the playthrough as well. I don't think we ended up grabbing any from earlier. And man, a huge vein of iron as well. I think that will seal this back up right here. And once again, put back our ladders to the top. Although, although it looks like we have run out of ladders. The good news is we have more planks. So we'll craft some more sticks, place down a torch, and then our crafting table. And we'll be able to make 39 more ladders. And here you go. And we're definitely getting close to the spawner too. We're finally reaching deep slate layers. And it looks like we've stumbled across the mine shaft as well. Now let's be careful here. I don't want any creepy crawlies to come out. We'll place down a pillar right here and we'll light up the area as well. And since we can, I think that we're going to keep on heading down this way. We'll cover in the entire area and get back to work digging down. And I may have lost where we were going, but we did find another minecart with a chest. And two diamonds! Well, with Bane of Arthropods and some more torches as well, a total win. And we have even more. And we have another one with Unbreaking 3, which is good for me. And another one? Not as much in here, but we do have an iron pickaxe, as well as some diamonds right here. Let's see how many we get. Two? Hey, I'm definitely cool with that. And we found the spawner area, but I can't seem to find the drop shoe which we ended up popping in here with. And we found it. I think that the light ended up shining down just a little bit so that I could see it. We'll make it clear that this is the spot, and we'll finish off our mine shaft down here. Now we'll quickly make an infinite source of water. We can put you right here and you right here and then put a bucket of water right there and we'll finish off the ladder back up top and we'll place down these ladders right here which is going to tell us that we'll be heading this way to the spawner. Might as well light the area up a bit too and we do have one more minecart with the chest and so before we try to get it why don't we eat real quick and it looks like there's a zombie there too. I do say that we try to get it real quick and we'll get rid of you too bogey and let's see what we get. I think we've already been in that one. Okay, we'll light you up right here so we know. But for the moment, we'll take these blocks and we'll block off this area right here. That way we know we won't be getting ambushed by anybody. And I say that we smoothen this out a little bit too so that we know that this is where we want to go. And so cool, that looks good to me. And I say we make this area just a bit safer too, as well as this one. And I really do hear a ton of spiders, so we're going to have to be careful as we head down to the spawner. And there are a whole ton of webs standing in the way of the spawner room. Now let's light this guy bad boy up real quick, and then we'll head back to our safe zone and eat up some more food. It looks like that cave spider is trapped. But gosh, you guys are scary, and we'll probably end up using all of our beetroot on this adventure. And so feeling a little bit safer, we're going to continue to clear out this area. And I'm going to place down a chest right here so that we can clear our inventory. Looks like we have another bogey right here, and another one right there. Guess we have to check all the corners. And another one just past the string right here. And we have two, maybe three right here. And we'll clear out the rest of the string. I'm going to open up this area too. There's something that tells me that there's another spider spawner right here. That's what I'm talking about. We dropped down too far. And another bogey. My hunch was correct. We do have another spider spawner right here. So I think that the best plan is going to be to isolate myself from it. Now I'm going to feel just a tad bit safer while we work. So the first step to making a spider spawner is going to be to make a 9 by 9 area surrounding the spawner. So we'll be careful, but let's get to work clearing out this area. And I do realize we could do a double XP spider farm, but I think that once we have enough levels, we'll be good to go. And so I don't feel like putting in the extra work for this playthrough. And I think that there's a spider under this block right here. It looks like multiple. Let's be careful. Man, they're taking it out of me. You gotta fix that spot real quick. And gosh, this always nerve wracking being on one heart. Come on, Beetroot. You're all I got right now. Feel a whole lot better if we get rid of you. So it looks like I forgot to hit record there. But what we've done is we finished digging along. We have two blocks above the spawner. And then we dug down three blocks below the spawner. We put a bucket of water on each end right here. And then we dug out the blocks that the water wasn't touching. And the last little thing that we've done is we've made a two block long, three block wide little hole. In this little area, Area is going to be for capturing the spiders once they spawn in. And so now we're going to continue to expand this area out seven more blocks. Here's one, two, and three, four, five, six, and seven. We're of course going to pillar in this area too. And it actually goes right up to where our entrance is. We can place a trapdoor on top of it. And now we'll have an easy access AFK chamber. On the second row back, we're going to place down three signs, just like this. And now we're going to skip two rows, one and then two. And then we're going to dig out another three by two area. And of course, we'll fill it in. We'll craft up three chests and make three hoppers to go with it. And now we'll make three more chests. You could say I'm quite happy that we have an iron farm. And so we'll place down our chests here and then put a hopper going into each one of them. We're gonna put some slabs over the top here and then dig out one row right here next to the slabs and fill this in with walls. And three should do the trick just like this. We're gonna have to head back to grab two more buckets of water, taking out all the blocks that are holding in the water. And so the water will spill down to here. We can place this slab back down and then we'll place a water bucket here and a water bucket here. And so with everything good to go, we're gonna place some slabs and block out this 
this entire area leading up to the chests. And we'll dig out around here too, just to give ourselves a little bit more space. And the last thing for us to do is to place some trapdoors down right here. That way the spawners can't reach us, but we'll be able to reach them with our sword. So ladies and gentlemen, the last thing to do is going to be to take away this torch and the spiders are going to spawn in. They'll hopefully head down to the AFK chamber and we'll be able to take them out. We'll place some trapdoors down here right now to look into the spawner. Later we'll have glass, or at least hopefully. I don't think I can actually get tinted glass, but we'll take out our sword and more spiders are spawning in. And now we have a super easy XP farm. So that is looking good to go. I'm going to take our diamonds and our important things. And I say let's head back to the surface to check on the iron farm. And later we'll probably come back to this area to light up the other spider spawner. That way we can get better drops. But right now I don't have any food and I don't want to take any chances. So let's head back up on the ladder. And it does look like it's going to be daytime for us. And we'll make a little bit more of a compass just so that we know exactly where to go. And we'll take down this guy. And I think it might be a good idea to light up this area so that we can always get down to the spider spawner. Or back from it if it's nighttime time I guess. And we'll have to remember that the spider spawner is just past this entrance to the cave right here. And Dorothy you've gone so far girl, let's get you back to Cameltopia. And I know that village really is so pretty over there. But this my beautiful steed is our home. And here you go girl, I'll leave you be right here. Go read some books. And so I say let's chop down these melons real quick to get some food. And it looks like our iron farm is still working but we have another bogey. And man I am totally ready for another food source. And it looks like we've gotten 15 iron thus far. But we'll take our lava pool and we'll head on over to our iron golem friend. Because because he's about to have quite the fiery awakening. And I'm sorry to have to do it to you. And a second time. And three. And four. And five. Now I did it because it was absolutely necessary. And our diamond pick is about to go. I think that we're going to hold on to it just for like commemorabilia. So we'll switch on over to our iron pick. And then to our shovel and get back digging down. And while we're at it, why don't we try to take a look at this thing. And maybe try to put some trapdoors on top to stop spawns. Now they may burn, but that's okay with me. As long as it tells us that that's how we solve the problem. And we have another iron golem burning. I'm going to do the same thing on this end before the sun sets. And we'll do it one more time on this side but it seems like this is solving the problem and quickly as the sun goes down we'll put a one and a two and a three now that's a mission success well done slip and we'll take some more iron from you and yeah that is totally working okay cool cool i say we head back to the house real quick and we'll drop off our materials and so we got a bane of arthropods book along with an unbreaking three book i'm gonna make one more diamond pick we're gonna save two diamonds for an enchanting table and we'll make ourselves a diamond sword and we'll just use iron picks before we get more diamonds and we already have almost a stack and a half of string from that and we have 37 emeralds total now talk about a win so i say we get rid of this stone axe and we can make ourselves an iron one and now while i think about the next steps let's chop down these trees and we'll get to reharvesting the field as well and it looks like the tree farm is working out too we'll chop down these guys as well i do gotta say even when i'm chopping trees i have my head kind of on a swivel for these creepers you really never know when they're gonna sneak up on you and a little over a stack of wood from that let's make sure that we remember to replant the saplings this time and we can try out our diamond sword for the first time. I'm slicing through them like butter. And so I think I'm just going to steal a little bit more dirt. And we're going to make this tree farm just a little bit bigger. And our wood situation really isn't starting to look too shabby. And I say we might as well get our sugar cane while we're at it too. Except for that is not what I want to see. Not good for the game plan. I don't know how, but it looks like a zombie has gotten in here. And so we'll have to hold on to you. Thank goodness we don't have glass walls. And hopefully we can repair you at some point during the playthrough. And of course, the phantoms start to come in too. This couldn't get any more unlucky. All right, let's close the door and think. And so it looks like although our zombie friends have perished, we still have one over here. You, Clifton, are going to be huge for the game plan. And no, sir, you're going the wrong way. We just need you in one place, Cl Clifton. We were so close. And that is not where you want to be. Lock this up, too. Now in here, you good fellow. Come on. Now, Clifton... Now Clifton, listen to me, we need you. You're an important part of the game plan here, sir. You know, this might be a whole lot easier if we had a boat. And you, sir, are not going to be going anywhere. This right here is your new home, Clifton. And I know it's not going to look very good at the moment, but you are very important. And so now, the real question is, do you want to become a blacksmith? And it looks like you do with discounted trades as well. We'll have to make you a little bit of a shelter right now. And let's go and get our emeralds. I'm hoping that 37 should be enough to get us to an iron trade. And let's hope that you give us a good trade. And iron, okay, it looks like we're alright. And we're already good on emeralds. You're going to level up again for us. And we have a diamond hoe as well as an unbreaking one efficiency one axe. And this is for one emerald too. You might as well get a couple of those. And you'll level up for us one more time, getting us a silk touch efficiency two shovel. I say let's throw out this guy and we'll grab you as well. Lift in your being big for the game plan. I'm going to make a quick lava pit and we'll throw our shovels into there. There's really something satisfying about doing this too. And we'll pick it back up just so that we don't have any problems later on. Now in order to get this guy mended up over here, as well as to progress, I think an important next step is going to be to head to the nether. And once again, there is a lava pool over here. So we're going to grab some water real quick and then we'll head on over 
over there to try to get some obsidian, and I really wasn't thinking about this. We're almost out of durability on our pickaxe, and of course we have another stuck iron golem, so hopefully we can get at least enough obsidian to make another portal. If not, we may have to head back down to the mines, so we can quickly put down our water bucket, and then I'm going to mine down right here. We'll place it down once again and get to work on mining some obsidian. And we've made the ice bucket challenge. That works in my book. And gosh, it's even more painstaking to mine obsidian when it's nighttime. You just have a feeling that a creeper is going to sneak up at any point. This is going to bring us to nine obsidian, so we're going to grab three more after this. And so as a couple of husks come, I say that we try to make the treacherous trek back to our kingdom. Amultopia, here I come. And we'll put some moves on some mobs while we're at it. And home sweet home. I say let's try to get rid of this guy real quick. And we'll also place down our obsidian while we're at it. One, two, three, four. I think we'll use some temporary blocks right now. And I totally messed this up. We can get rid of this whole column right here. And it's even more painstaking when you mess up with obsidian. All right, and so we'll place a temporary block right here and now we can fill her up. And we have another phantom squad coming. I say that we try to get some sleep tonight. Sweet dreams, good world. And you could say new day, new me. So let's mine back down this cobblestone. And then I'm realizing we actually don't need these full blocks on the end that the iron golem is standing on top of. So of course we're gonna have to get rid of you once again. And just die already, please. It's so sketchy and time consuming. And there we go. Now we should still be good to go if we get rid of these blocks on the end. And so now we probably won't have to worry about spawning. Ouch. And we'll make two more hoppers to continue to expand this area right here. And we might as well take our gold right here and craft up a pair of boots. And we'll put them on because it is just about time to head to the nether. You know what, Scratch, that we're actually going to do that tomorrow. Or maybe tonight. Right now it's going to be more important to harvest our crops. And make sure that this guy is working once again. Now that's looking a whole lot better. So I think that we're going to chop down some trees as well. And it looks like we've gotten our first poisonous potato. Maybe we can put that in an item frame or something like that. And so I say we collect these saplings real quick and replant them down as and plant them back down as the sun sets. And we have plenty of potatoes left so let's actually get them smelting so that we can have some food. And we'll head back on over to the PB&J sandwich while we're at it. And let's see just to make sure, is the iron farm working? I do see a husk coming towards us and it looks like we have an iron golem spawning in. Perfect. We shouldn't have to worry about iron going on. I'm gonna take your iron real quick. Got eight in the chest too. And that will feed the clan. Perfect. Now next time I come harvesting. Now I'm not sure if this will work, but I think that if we place a bucket of lava, there is a potential that it lights up the portal. I unfortunately don't think I have any flint on me. Scratch that, it looks like we do. Let's make a flint and steel, as well as grab a ton of building blocks, and get our sword at the ready, because ladies and gentlemen, it is time to go to the nether. And I'm hoping for a crimson forest. You see, hoglins have a chance of dropping leather, and since we don't have any cows on us, it's going to be the only way that we can get books for enchanting. And I want to be able to do that as soon as possible, so let's light this portal and hop into the void for the first time. Okay, okay, okay. Not a bad entry, but I do hear a guest, so I want to get this guy covered soon. Just don't take out the portal. I've had my portal taken out by a guest in a hardcore world before, so we're not going to take any chances today. And we do have a crimson forest over here, exactly what you're looking for. And I don't see any structures immediately, but that's okay. My render distance is on pretty low anyway. Now let's see if we can go and get ourselves some leather. And it looks like in the distance we have a warped forest over here too. That couldn't be more perfect for the game plan. Now it's time to find us some hoglins. I'm gonna grab one of these just in case. And it looks like I hear one. Now can we get lucky the first time? It looks like he's stuck, so that works for me. And I think he's dropped our first leather too. Now that makes me feel good. Let's stick on around to try to get a little bit more. And I swear, whenever I don't want to see any hoglins, they're like impossible to find. And it finally looks like we found one but of course it's just a baby yeah run away run away and this guy got a hit on in me we'll go down one more and try to get some pop shots in at this guy and a little bit more leather too get out of here and man i hate pillaring over the lava man these guys hit hard come and get me yeah good try foul swine and more leather cool that brings us to four but man i can't wait to get out of here i think that i see another hoglin right here and it looks like we'll safely be able to take him out too and any more leather for me none that time i think i'm going for six right now i really don't know why they're making it so hard to find these hoglins still no leather from that guy and we're running out of food and so i think that we'll take a quick pit stop from the nether so hopefully we can come back and hoglins will respawn and it is night time and it looks like the iron farm is still working out here although we're still not getting all the drops but that's okay we still got 36 iron from that and i didn't do anything for an enchanting setup that is so we'll head back to our house and we are pretty much totally out of storage and so we'll make four books we'll take out our diamonds and i'm still two obsidian short but we definitely know what we're gonna do in the next day i think we'll switch out our iron for our gold boots or i mean our gold for our iron 
iron boots. And I say, why don't we do a little bit more trading with Clifton? Thank you there, Clifton. And let's see what your next trade is. A silk touch diamond pickaxe. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And for 27 emeralds too, I think I might have that. We have 25, we're so close. So we're gonna have to hold off at the moment, but we'll come back around to doing that. We can collect up a little bit more iron. And I say that while we're here, we might as well finish up the iron farm. We'll make five more hoppers. And it looks like this still might not even be enough. Okay, hopefully that should be good to go. Now let's head once again back to the lava pit while playing the mob dodging Olympics. And Calabunga, and back to the grindstone we are. I'm really hoping this diamond pickaxe has two hits left and it looks like we should be okay. And let's do three for good measure. Okay, perfect. And back to Cameltopia. Calabunga, in time to make our first ever enchanting table. Just in time for day 40 as well. So we'll place our enchanting table right down here. And our next plan is to make a lectern. Oh hey there, I'm just trying to use the crafting table if you don't mind. And so we'll make some slabs. And we'll also make a bookshelf. And we can craft those together into a lectern. So I haven't used the waypoint yet. And our plan is to teleport to another village to get a librarian and to make ourselves a bookshelf trade. We're gonna have to leave Dorothy behind on this adventure. So let's grab her emeralds real quick. And I do want to see if I can rename this place. And of course, we're gonna call this place Cameltopia. And so let's teleport to the other village. And once again, we have plenty of villagers here. I've put the lectern in here. Hopefully one of you goes to it. Although it might be too late in the day. And let's see. Looks like nothing from you. And I'll put a bed down to make it extra appealing too. And it looks like we have a librarian. But not the trade that we want. So we're gonna re-roll. And what about now? Who wants to trade now? Andres! Sweeping Edge 3. But we want bookshelves right now. And what about you, Natisha? And a bookshelf trade. Perfect. We'll get two bookshelves from that. And we'll lock you in here just to be safe. Now, perfect. I really could have taken Dorothy. I mean, Cameltopia is really right there. But we'll head back home as the sun sets. And hopefully do some trading to get even more emeralds. And actually, I think I have a better idea. Since it's nighttime, why don't we head on over to the spider XP spawner? And that way we can AFK to get some more levels, which will help us for trading later on. If I forget, I feel like I placed a water bucket down here, but I can't really fully remember. I think we are good. And so let's head down here and get to work slaying some spiders. I'm also going to make this place just a little bit nicer while we AFK. Now we have 31 levels right now. Let's see how many we can get in eight minutes. And die, Vals, come die. Okay, so I got bored about five minutes or so into AFKing, and we got just about a level from that. I really don't need too much from this farm, so I'm actually okay with those raids. Now I say that let's head to the surface and continue with the game plan. And we are approaching day 40, making us 40% of the way through the playthrough. And so it's time to start to get ready to prepare for the end fight. So we're gonna have to keep on collecting iron, and we're gonna try to steal this blast furnace. And that was easy enough. We can also place down our first two bookshelves and head back to the iron farm to see if we have any more drops. And it looks like still not everything's going into the hopper, but I suppose that we'll do another trade with Clifton. Hey you there, sir. Thank you for your generosity. And that's a couple more bookshelves. I think that we're going to want two armorers, so why don't we make one more blast furnace? I guess that means we're going to have to smelt some more stone. And so why don't we chop down some more trees while we wait? And we'll plant back down all the saplings. It looks like we're becoming a hungry man's as well. Num 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 num. Man, it's so cringe every single time I do that. But leave a like if you think it's funny. And let's double check to make sure that this guy is running. Sometimes I feel like it only happens at night, and that might be the case. But I say it's just about time to start expanding our storage, so we'll take our barrel, and now when we harvest the sugar cane, we can put it all in here, which we'll save for later paper trades. Speaking of, I'm gonna make a cartography table. That way we can get another paper trade, and we'll put our stone right back into the furnace to make smooth stone. And so, as the sun sets and we wait for our iron farm to start up once again, Let's get back to harvesting some sugar cane. And man, there really is something so satisfying about doing this at sunset. It's just calming and relaxing, and I'm really proud of everything we've done thus far. And it looks like these guys are moving once again, so I do think that the iron golems are gonna start spawning. But we might as well get a little bit closer to get a better look. And perfect, we are back in action. Now we're gonna wanna hang around here tonight just to make sure that we can get as much iron as we can for trades. Let's put away our sugar cane real quick. And I say, why don't we harvest the PB&J while we're close to the iron farm? All right, and we should be good with food for the foreseeable future. Let's go and collect this iron. A quick 15 from that, and here comes more. And of course, the phantoms have to come. I guess we might as well try to get some phantom membranes while we wait. We do have a diamond sword now, after all. There's one phantom membrane, and there's two, and three phantoms down, with two phantom membranes. I really can't complain with that. And let's see if we can't take out some skeletons while we wait, and maybe just do some general mob slaying while we're at it. I'm sorry, chainmail man, you're gonna have to go. Well, he went. And take me on, foul sir. Out of my house. And I can do a three on one. <laughs> Ouch. And take out the husk. Hey, took him out. Think I'm gonna make a quick exit. I'll take you on my own terms. And now it's your turn. And I like your golden armor, good sir. It's a shame you have to go too. Now we can collect some iron once again. Funny here for us. And this really isn't too bad in terms of multitasking. I'll drag all of you this way. That way we can keep the spawn rates coming. And goodbye. And to you, sir, I will have to say farewell. I like your sword there, good sir. It's a shame you have to go as well. Get blocked. Get hit. Get blocked. Get hit. Get blocked. Get hit, get blocked, get, get hit, 
It hit. It hit again. And it and something broke. My helmet. I want you, sir. Get blocked. Get blocked. Get blocked. Thank you for your donation. And you, sir, can burn in the sky. Psych. And let's take this more iron. And thank you for dropping down there. That's almost a stack. And we're level 34. So the plan is we're going to head back to the other village. And now one of you good fellows is going to become an armorer. Let's see who it becomes. Let's throw away all of this nonsense real quick. And I need one of you to be a cartographer as well. It could be you, but it looks like it might be you instead. And all right, another paper trade. You're locked in. Let's buy some more things that we don't need from you. And then from you. And so we'll teleport back to make some more trades with Clifton. Thank you good sir. Before we warp back once again and we'll make a composter to make another villager. You will go here and you will become a farmer of wheat and potatoes. Andres we can do that and we can do a little bit more trading with you and actually use one of those iron helmets but it looks like that's all we can do over here at the moment and I think that I'll just run back to the village to conserve on XP. Now we're gonna grab ourselves some taters and grab our stone and mine out some quick cobblestone to make a furnace. We'll craft up that furnace and make one more blast furnace. Now hopefully we can find Dorothy. Dorothy girl where are you? Dorothy, where are- there she is! Dorothy, we gotta go, girl, because the sun is starting to set and we want to make one more villager profession. It feels good to be with Dorothy once again. Now, whoa there, girl, don't go too fast. And the village is waiting for us, Dorothy. And now one of you is going to become an armorer once again. The question is, who's it gonna be? Looks like you, and we'll get to doing that in a moment. For now, we're gonna find our farmer friend and let's settle in their trades. We're also gonna make a ton more paper, and we can trade with the librarian to level them up too. Now we'll lock in your trade too, and I want to see what the librarian trade is real quick. It looks like we have a lantern trade. That works for me, but Dorothy and I are going to get out of here because we don't want anything bad to happen to you all tonight. Let's hope that works, Dorothy, because we totally need diamond armor. I don't want to lose you in the playthrough after so much hard work. All right, Dorothy, we'll let you hang out here. Go read some books. And you're right, that might be a good spot for a nap. But you're a lucky girl. I still have plenty of work to do. I say let's take up the sugar cane. We'll craft up even more paper. And I hear some phantoms starting to come in. But I think I'm okay with phantom membranes right now, so let's head inside. Yeah, we have six total phantom membranes. That should be good to go, and we'll craft up even more paper, as well as deposit some more materials before we reharvest some more potatoes. And if you want to come right into my grasp, then I'll kill you down. Dorothy, stay away from the phantoms. Don't worry, I'll protect you, girl. I mean, we know that you could take them on all by yourself, but we don't want that for the phantoms, girl. Anyway, it is time to clear out all the beetroot in order to make more room for the potatoes. And let's head back to the iron farm to collect up a little bit more iron. It blocks, and let's see, plenty of iron in here, and 13 more in the chest, bringing us 39 total. Now I say we hang around here and craft up some stairs, and that way we can farm some iron and also make this place a little bit more accessible. And I really don't like the look of this, so I'm also going to tear this down. Get smacked. Get blocked. And it looks like the wandering trader has arrived again, although we still can't see him. And he really doesn't seem to want to interact with me. But look at that. We have acacia and spruce sap and mangrove saplings. How is that possible? Okay, you, sir, have to to go. You have to go. It is time for us to farm iron throughout the night here. And then we're cashing in with emeralds to get all the saplings we could ever need. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have an oasis. Get blocked. Haha, <laughs> got him. Now, let's go and trade with Clifton. Now, thank you for your service. And 15 emeralds. Let's see how far that gets us. All right, we can get one of each sapling right now. And we're going to do some more trades today and we'll come back to get some more. Now, let's quickly chop down these trees and we'll place down our new saplings. And man, we really just couldn't get any luckier this playthrough. This is day 42. And we really have so much building potential for the rest of the playthrough. We'll also place down our acacia sapling right there, and that way all three of these wood types have some extra space to get saplings. We'll craft up one more axe and knock down these two trees right here to give some extra space for the acacia sapling. Perfect. Now let's head over to these barrels. We'll put away some of the stuff that we don't need, and we will take what we do need, namely a ton of paper, and we'll bone meal all of these seeds down with a composter right here, and then we'll reharvest our potatoes to get as many emeralds as we can. And actually, since we have so much paper, let's see if we can get rid of some of it right now. And I have something for you and now you're locked out and we have 16 emeralds enough for three more saplings as well as i have a trade for you too bringing us to 24 well that works for me and we'll head back to cameltopia where we'll trade with you once again and now that we have three spruce saplings we should be good to go i'm gonna take you as well as the two of you and you and we'll place you right here one two three four perfect 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 and let's see if we can try to get even more paper trades and i gotta say this early game sugarcane farm is really starting to pay off and we'll also try to bone meal our potatoes while we're here so back to comp posting we go. And we might as well harvest our grubs too, as well as our earthworms. All right, 16 beetroot from that really isn't too shabby. Now let's quickly fortune all these potatoes. And so we'll teleport back one more time as the iron starts to spawn. And let's see if we can trade with you one more time. And what about with you? Perfect. Now it's going to bring us back to 30 levels, but we're going to teleport back to Cameltopia. And let's try to stop by the wandering trader one more time. Now I see you and you're by yourself without a lead. Where did your trader friend go? And I see the particles. Let's get 
one more AU, and one more AU. Now I can say I'm feeling confident about our wood situation. And as you can see, our first spruce tree has already grown in the distance, and so we might as well chop this bad boy down. And over a stack of logs from that one tree. Now that's what I'm talking about. And so to stay away from the phantoms, I might as well chop these trees down too. And we can put one more acacia sapling, and one more mangrove proper yule right here. I really still can't get my head around how that worked out. We already have so many different types of wood, pretty much all the wood I could ever want. But besides maybe oak wood, we are good to go. And my, I gotta say, Dorothy really does love to wander around everywhere. Thankfully, I may just know a solution to that problem, and I think it lies where these bubbles are coming from. We'll take some pink dye, just in case, and we'll get rid of you as well. And then I hate to do it to you, but I think that we're gonna start striking right here. I'm sorry, Shirley, but I found you. And we didn't even get any leads from that, but we might as well get ourselves some iron, and we're back up to 45 pieces. Now, I don't think this is the case, but could you drop a lead for me? Nope. No leads, or Dorothy's still gonna have to wander around everywhere. And now we're at 54 iron, so let's pop over to Clifton real quick. We'll do some more trades. Now we can start to get collecting for some bookshelves. And let's see if we got any more saplings. You, sir, are supposed to be dying. Get blocked. Get blocked again. But we have enough saplings to make another spruce tree, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. And we'll chop this guy down as well. After I collect a little bit more iron, that is. Now back to tree chopping we go. And we'll place another four dirt blocks down right here. Because I have the feeling that we're gonna have space for a third tree. And golly, we already have plenty of spruce logs. Over two stacks to be exact. And so I do believe that I still have a bunch of beetroot seeds in here. And so while we wait for some more saplings, I'm going to do a little bit more composting. And it's funny, you actually can't compost a poisonous potato. I didn't know that. We'll also take our bones and we'll make a little bit more bone meal and get straight back to work at getting more potatoes. And we'll harvest our sugar cane one more time and collect the saplings real quick. We'll once again make some more paper. And now it's time for Dorothy and I to head back to the other place. Let's go, girl. And our first acacia sapling has grown as well, but we'll probably chop that down during the nighttime. And it feels like a good evening to do some trades. And thank you for the ride there, Dorothy. We'll do some more trades with you with potatoes. And with you with paper. And glass is a good one too. Now we'll take those emeralds and we'll trade with you for some more bookshelves. We got two more from that. But it looks like that'll be all the trading we can do for the moment. So we're gonna head on back to Cameltopia. And once again, it is quite beautiful as the sun sets in the desert. And home sweet home. I'll drop you off here, girl. Go read some books. And now it looks like both acacia trees have grown. And we'll place down our bookshelves right here. And we'll do some more trades with Clifton. And as I make sure that the iron farm is working, I have a new plan. While that guy smelts on down and we wait for our trees to grow, we'll take out our shovel and we'll get to breaking down some sand so that we can smelt it up in the glass panes. And then we'll use that glass for trades. And I think that two layers should be good enough for now. Now we'll get to smelting some sand. And since we have so much wood now, I'm also going to make a ton of charcoal because that will help us in the future. We can go to collect our iron and do even more trading with Clifton. We can also bone meal some earthworms. And I'm also going to mine up a bit more cobblestone so that we can make some more furnaces. Now this little tunnel should be enough. We can put down four more furnaces here and it couldn't hurt to get even more charcoal going. We'll go back once again to get even more iron. It may be manual but efficiency is key right now. And it looks like we have a bogey with an enchanted bow. You know, I'd like your enchanted bow, but I'll take arrows instead. So let's craft up some glass panes. Get blocked, get blocked, and burn. Get blocked and burn. And once again, while we wait, we might as well chop down some trees. I think we're getting close to making a stutter base soon. And actually, once again, let's make sure that we got all the iron that we need. And there's a little bit more, and four more in the chest, bringing us to a total of 42. It may be time consuming, but it's definitely worth making the trips right now. Now let's keep chopping down these trees, and we'll chop down this guy as well too. And we have two trees chopped down and a whole ton of wood. And most importantly, enough saplings to keep the operation going. We'll drop off our wood real quick, and then grab all of our sand and make a whole ton of glass panes. We'll trade with Clifton real quick, and that gives us 25 emeralds. And now we'll take Dorothy to head back to the village. Off we go, girl. I know that this is kind of a back and forth and back and forth, but I do kind of think that this is the nature of the playthrough, especially given the fact that we lost all of our villagers. And the theme of this video is slow and steady wins the race. And I still am happy with the progress that we've been making. And here we are once again. And it's very quick to level you up with all these glass panes. And now we're locked out. I think we'll make a chest real quick and we can put the glass panes into them for later. As for now, the idea is going to be to trade with all of you and hopefully get to work on getting some diamond armor. And let's see. Looks like we have an iron trade for her too. Awesome. And we might as well get one of your helmets too. Not bad, not bad, not bad. But it's just about time that we get out of here, Dorothy. And we really seem to be on a circadian rhythm right Right here. And we are once again home sweet home. I'll let you go here, girl. Go read some books. And we have a little bit more iron at the iron farm. This time we'll spend it all at the other village. And so the best thing I can think about doing at the moment is harvesting these trees right here. And there happens to be a husk below me too, so I'm gonna have to keep that in mind. But our first mangrove wood, this makes me really excited for the rest of the playthrough. And we'll grab our first acacia as well. And it looks like you're an easy kill, as well as you. And get out of here. And mangrove trees really are the worst. Having to cut down all these vines every time is just so painstaking. And actually, let's go check on the iron farm real quick. 
quick. And yeah, there's a ton of iron here and 20 more in the chest. I'm glad that we went to grab that. But now to get the last of the mangrove saplings and really not a horrible haul from that. We have plenty of mangrove propagules, but only 26 mangrove logs. And we might as well place down some acacia trees right here as the sun comes up for day 45. And we have even more iron waiting for us, bringing us up to 48 total. That works for me. So we'll grab the rest of the glass that we have, put away all the materials we don't need, and then we'll hop back on Dorothy again to head to the other village, which I think I'm going to call Camelopolis. You know, Cameltopia, Camelopolis, kind of desert themed. I like it and we're going to go with it. And well, hello once again. We'll trade you all the iron we have, and then we'll take those emeralds and we'll trade with you. And we'll take even more glass panes, craft up as many as we can, and then we'll trade with you. And I like that you're selling banners. And we've locked you out and we've leveled you up. And with 18 emeralds, we're going to head back to you, Brain and maybe you're leveled up for an iron trade too. Let's see, what are you selling us? Nothing really that good at the moment, but one emerald sh for a shield isn't that bad, so we'll level you up and see what your next trade has to offer. And we'll once again do another trade with you. Looks like we have you as a master trader for 10 more emeralds, and we can put these guys away. Put away two shields too, but maybe it's time to switch up for a fresh one. Now you're even selling us the globe banner pattern. Cool, thanks Lakeisha. We'll head back to Brain one more time. It does look like he is at iron trade, and we'll get some more chainmail boots to level him up. Now, Ala, this is what we're looking for. We have some diamond leggings with unbreaking 3, and we have diamond boots with Death Strider 1 and Blast Protection 2. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have 35 levels to our name, too. The pace is starting to pick up here, but we're gonna hop on Dorothy, and back we go to Cameltopia. It's been a good adventure, Camelopolis. Alright, girl, here you go. Go read some books. Now I say we harvest our sugar cane, and then we'll reharvest our potato field too. During the night, we'll AFK kind of around the iron farm, and we'll dig up more sand to get as many emeralds as we can in the morning. This grind really is starting to pay off. And of course, it looks like I missed one mangrove log, so we'll craft up some more paper. We can place it in the chest for safekeeping, and then we're gonna keep on with harvesting these potatoes. All right, perfect. We got plenty of potatoes from that, so we can also place them in here and get back to work at collecting some iron. And while we do that, we're gonna take out even more sand. I don't think I could be farming any more things at once right now. We have two different crops growing over here. We're farming sand and we have iron farming too. You could say that efficiency is the name of the game right now. And we got a bogey. But the good news is we have a fresh shield. And so that man's was nothing for us. And we got an enchanted bow fella and a creeper. I think I might get out of here. At least so that we can regain some health. And the bogey has returned, but you can get out of here. And you sir could actually be helpful. Thank you. I could use that sand. And so let's get back to smelting. And once again, back to the iron farm we go. Although sometimes it feels like it gets a little bit dangerous. And thank you for your donation. And I say, Let's keep on digging. And we got another gang. And we're getting followed by a spider as well. I think it might be the time to dip. Let's head inside real quick and smelt up even more sand. So as the sun starts to rise, we'll grab all the materials we want. Grab the last little bit of iron from overnight, leaving us with 48 total. And I always miss that jump. But then we'll grab our glass. And once we find Dorothy, we're going to head back to Camelopolis. Dorothy, you wandering girl you. Now where have you headed to this time? Dorothy, where are you? I can't seem to find that dang camel anywhere. And there she is, but she's right next to the waystone. So I think that we might actually actually use it. Save ourselves a little bit of time, and now we'll trade our iron with you, our paper with you, our potatoes with you, and now we can get ourselves protected with a pair of diamond boots. Let's put those on real quick, and it looks like Brain is going to level up too, but unfortunately for the same set of trades. Now that is not what we were looking for. Whatever, we'll craft up even more glass panes, and we've locked out that trade too, but we might as well use our emeralds on some more bookshelves. That gives us three more. Not bad, not bad, not bad. But once again, we trek back to Cameltopia. It looks like a desert storm has come in, which reminds me, we actually haven't gotten a thunderstorm yet. Take a little bit more iron, giving us nine extra more. And then I think we're going to save up next for a trade with Clifton. With 27 emeralds, we can get another diamond pick. So we're going to try our best to get that. We'll place down three more bookshelves. And I say we get our first low level enchant on an axe right here, because that way our tree chopping is going to be a little bit easier. Now my storage situation is really starting to get out of control. So I think that it's best that we use this building right here and use it to try to solve the problem a little bit. We can place down an enchanting table and then craft up a bunch of chests and we'll stack them like so, or maybe like so. And now I say let's start sorting out our storage. We're going to start with all of the food items and we'll place them in this chest right here. These double chests are going to go for bigger items like building blocks and other non-wood items. This chest right here is going to be for all of our important items. This will consist of ores and other random things that are kind of hard to find. And then once it gets big enough, it'll only be ores. We'll put miscellaneous things that are important in here, just like rotten flesh, which we could trade later, and paper. This bottom chest right here will be saved for wood and we'll break down these furnaces while getting smacked by phantoms and place them in our old home to kind of make a 
little bit more of a smelting area. And one thing I have forgotten to do, man, if I looked at that Enderman, but one thing I did forget to do is to check on the iron farm while we did this. Good news, it looks like most of everything hasn't despawned. But now, in this building, we have everything organized. We can open the door. And in this chest, once again, we have our food items. We have nothing in this chest. Our middle chest has kind of like accessory items. We have random blocks up here. I think I can organize that just a little bit more. And then all of our wood is in this bottom chest right here. All of the goodies that we have go into this chest. And then things that we don't really need anymore or we're not going to use like the common hat grab bags we'll put in this chest right here. And so it looks like we have about four stacks of spruce logs, about a stack of birch logs, almost half a stack of mangrove, and a little bit under a third of a stack of acacia. That'll be good to know going forward. But for now, we're going to once again harvest our sugarcane. And I know that we're really kind of in like the farming era of this Let's Play, but all the trees over here really are making this start to look like an oasis. And I gotta say, I'm totally loving it. We can head over here and craft up a little bit more paper. Once again, stash it away in here. Head to see if we've gotten anything from the iron farm. <laughs> Whoops. Might as well eat some food too. And we might as well harvest some potatoes too. We'll head over to the new storage building and we'll grab ourselves some glass. And we might as well get to smelting some in here as well. Now it's time to get Dorothy because it's our turn to head back to Camelopolis. And off we go girl. And we're back. Now I have iron to trade with with you. Please give us a chest plate. And it looks like I forgot the paper. But we have glass panes to trade. And we're locked out again. But we have 28 emeralds. And let's see what we can get from Allah. A chest plate for 19. And now dare I say we are good to go. We'll craft up a couple more bookshelves. Maybe just one. And I don't think I can leave it just there. We'll grab all our paper and teleport back to Camelopolis real quick. Now I need me some more emeralds. 19. Is that enough? And enough for a helmet too. Now we are fully kitted up and ready for the nether. Let's see. Can we sneak in any more trades here? And we've locked them out again, but we got five more emeralds. Now I call today a big, big win. Let's head home, Dorothy. That's not Dorothy. <laughs> She doesn't have a saddle. Where'd my girl go? There she is. Dorothy, we're heading back to Cameltopia. There you go, Dorothy. Go read some books. And so as the sun sets, we can go and place down one more bookshelf. And boom. Now I think that we're going to have to hold off and do one more day of trading before we gear up to go find the nether fortress. Because I have a feeling that Clifton still has some secrets up his sleeve. Though I guess maybe not. He is a master. But we still want to get this pickaxe because our first one is totally busted. So since the phantoms come into the sky again, we're gonna hoard a little bit more iron and try to avoid them as much as possible. And thank you for your donation. I think I might as well organize this storage over here too. <laughs> and I always miss that jump. I'm really gonna have to fix that at some point. Let's put these materials away. We'll put our redstone in here, our leather in here, our walls in here, along with our sand and then slab. And we'll get to smelting up these raw pork chops. Now we have even more glass panes to smelt up. And again, I would like to thank you for your donation. While we're out doing chores, we may as well head over to the enchant thing set up and let's see what sort of enchantment we can get that looks horrible what about on our leggings protection two and breaking one. Oh, that really could be better try to block you and let's try again with the sword gain of arthropods still not really what we're looking for what if we enchant the bow power one and now there's two of you three of you and get blocked Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to enchant the sword real quick. We can always disenchant later. Green of arthropods two. Stop attacking me and we'll swap out our boots real quick because we're going to head into the nether get a feel of where we're gonna go. All right, let's take another little peek. We might as well take our glass and kind of decorate the nether portal. And I think that will set off in this direction, as well as I'm wondering, can I get returned to sender? I've never tried to do it before. Well, you'd have to look at me in order to do that. But we'll head over in this direction in the Crimson Forest and try to find ourselves a fortress that way. From nether mobs to night mobs, but at least we have some more food. And so our plan for tomorrow is gonna be to try to get as many trades as we can, get that diamond pick from Clifton, and then we're gonna head into the nether. All right, my blood cliff, that's 15. Need 28. I say that we take out our bone meal, and as the sun rises, the phantoms will burn, and we'll reharvest our potato field. But you are not allowed on the potato field. And we also have our glass panes, so we'll teleport back to Camelopolis and get to trading, and more trading, and more trading. And that should be enough. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And so we'll teleport back once more, head on over to Clifton, and buy that diamond pickaxe. Now we'll hang up this bad boy in this chest right here. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to head to the nether. Because, as you all know, a nether fortress awaits. And let's see. Can I do it? Return to sender. Go for one and get back there. It's a lot harder to do when you're on fire. All right, I'm playing around a little bit too much. It's harder than it looks on YouTube, but we did get some magma cream from that. And I don't really know how, but that's something that I wanted to get. So henceforth, I say, and it looks like I've already been here before and I've already been here too. And I do know that there is like some sort of trick about falling long distances with a boat. 
I don't feel confident enough to do that. But we're going to try our best to find a safe-ish way to get down here. And I've already done this jump once before. <laughs> it's all about getting to the bottom layer. And I'll take one of you as well. And of course the hoglins show up when I don't want them to. And no way, we're just mining around right here. And this is my first piece of netherite ever. <laughs> Let's go. Ancient debris for me. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it. And I think we have dug in right beneath the soil. And I can't believe we got our nether worth this easily. So I think... So I think that I'm going to leave the rest just in case something happens. But I do see our first chest right here. We've got some gold and some more nether wart and a saddle. And we have another chest right here. We have some diamond horse armor and a flint and steel. We'll keep on blocking off these walls and exploring. And it looks like we have a bogey. We have nothing in that room. This room seems to be blocked off. So we'll keep heading this way. And it looks like that area is blocked off too. And this one is three. And, the, and it looks like the whole thing is blocked in. I guess we can keep going this way. And we found what, found what I was looking for. All right. And a blaze spawner. We can make this just a little bit more safe. I don't want anything bad happening to me. And actually, before we take on the blaze right there, I think I might have a better idea. We'll label this spawner, and we'll head back to the tunnel, where we can hopefully go back and trade with the piglin. That way we could maybe get a fire resistance potion, and then we wouldn't have to worry so much about the blaze. And I see a piglin right there, and there's nothing to worry about. I got my gold boots. Nothing that we want yet. Round two? We got arrows, but not exactly what I was looking for. And come on, please give me a potion. Some nether brick. You guys totally just let me down. Well, I guess we're gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. And this actually might work out pretty well. And did another two. Now we just don't want to get overrun. And again, I think that this is the easiest playthrough I've ever had. Maybe in my entire Minecraft experience. Not just in the 100 days. And just like that, we already have six blaze rods. I think we'll go for 12 right now. And thank you for your donations. And now this is where I dip real quick. Now these guys are just getting murked and call that an easy 12. And if we ever need more, we can always head back there. But for now, we have everything that we need. And so I say, let's go and find a warped forest. And seriously, that was the easiest blaze run I've ever had in my whole life. But what remains for us to do now is to safely get back to our portal, and then we'll get to work on collecting some ender pearls. And I say let's head home real quick just to drop off our stuff. And it's night time at Cameltopia. I think that we're going to immediately replant our nether wart in this area right here. And I still can't believe that we got a piece of ancient debris. We'll quickly grab three pieces of cobblestone. And of course I used a silk touch pick. We need three pieces of cobblestone. And we'll make up a brewing stand, which we can place down on top of our crafting table here. And so we'll head back into the nether. So I need two more things, the first of which is going to be a mushroom, which I think I can find in the forest over here. If not, I can just find them right here too. And it actually turns out we can find the ones that I'm looking for right here next to the biome that we need next, the warp forest. And this one is actually quite small, so I think we're going to move on a little bit and see if it expands. And it looks like it does. So we're going to head on down low, and when we see Enderman like this, we're going to dig into a wall, make ourselves kind of a cave so that the Enderman can't see us, but we can still hit them. And we'll continue on like this until we get 16 Ender Pearls. Down you go, and our first Ender Pearl. Now we just got to do that 15 more times. And some nether quartz can't hurt while we're at it too. And it looks like we've also stumbled across a bastion too. But that is not in the cards today. Hey, you get mad. You get mad. Come mess with me. And our second ender pearl. Can I catch a glimpse of a long range? It looks like no. And I do see some easy gold blocks. It might be worth it. And this is my first time ever in Minecraft ever trying to attack a bastion. And there's one gold block. And let's steal a second one super easily. And there's nothing that they can do about it. Easiest bastion raid of my life. And you know what? Now I'm intrigued. I think that it's possible to steal us a couple more. And I hear you snarling, but I'm gonna steal your gold. And man, I can tell that they're mad. Now, easy does it. We're just gonna continue our path around here. It looks like there's no gold on this side. Question is, what if we just continue to that pillar down here. And I really wasn't expecting to do a bastion raid right now. But I guess sometimes you just gotta go with it. And the lava is right next to us too. I gotta say, this is quite nerve wracking. But we've almost made our way to the bottom. And easy does it. I'm so nervous right now. Okay. And that's it. That is it. We are out. We are out of here. Time to head back upstairs. Although I see one more gold block right here. So I think that will take you too. Now I don't know what it looks like up here. So I'm just gonna take a quick, a quick peek. And so this must be the main room where all the piglins hang out. But I'm not gonna worry about them right now. I'm actually gonna head over here. Well, once again, start digging in walls and slaying down some ender scum and there's three and four we're really struggling to get ender pearls and i do see some piglin right here so let's do some trading with the gold that we just got we got 36 gold hopefully that'll help us out if not we'll probably get some other goodies as well like some leather that's super helpful string not so helpful now this is a lot more efficient and a soul speed too, book too and this is the last of our gold and they're making such a crazy sound too all right six ender eyes and still no potions from any of that too might as well take out my aggression on you you sir need to get out of the way 
Yep, and there's seven, and it's probably a bad idea, but for better or worse, I'm back here. So now we gotta be careful here. Now I see a chest. I'm wondering if I dig down, maybe I can open up the chest real quick, and they've seen me. But we're gonna do it again, and a bogey. See if we can take this man's out. And down he goes. Now this thing is huge, and I know literally nothing about a piglin bastion. What I do know is that I want to hit my shots. Down he goes too. We'll take out you as well. Now I'm wondering if I head over here. Let's eat up some food real quick. And then I'm wondering if I can just go to grab the gold real quick. We're gonna have to take out you. And man, these guys are strong. Good thing they're stuck right here. Perfect. And then I'm not sure if there are any more of you. Doesn't look like there are. And there's so much gold here. Except for I definitely gotta be careful. I'm definitely... I've set the whole bastion here, but we have a scrap. And so it is of utmost importance that we dig out of here as safely as we can. If so, we have 14 gold blocks. And this is like the biggest win of my life because we can get netherite. And this totally wasn't part of the 100 days. Our first ever piglin bastion raid in hardcore Minecraft in a desert only world. It really can't get too much better than that. And so I say we tunnel back up to the top, maybe steal one more gold block for fun. Although it seems like we've done ourselves the dirty right here and angered an enderman. So of course we're gonna lay down a little bit of a platform for him and I am not gonna take any chances right now. Just come fight me already. Oh, okay, that could have gone really bad and we are making good progress back to the portal. All right, and we see it. So we're gonna drop off everything that we've acquired, especially that smithing template. And then we'll head back to trade with the piglins for ender pearls. And man, my first ever netherite smithing template. I am beyond proud of myself. And so let's head back into the nether portal. And it is day 52, by the way. So I say let's Let's get along to trading with the piglin and they also say let's also try to like find a group of them to make it a little bit more time efficient and you sir no longer scare me although we do need to make another pair of iron boots or golden boots and now i gotta be careful didn't want to have to kill him but i was getting attacked by that hoglin and this right here is what we're looking for still no ender pearls but we're definitely getting a bunch of things that we might need and finally we have a potion of fire weakness but still no ender pearls take them out piglin take them out if you emerge victorious i'll trade with you and we're on to our last stack of gold but still no eyes of ender and there we have it finally i guess we can get rid of our nether bricks and that's four more Let's hope that we get lucky one more time and this man's got my gold ingot and i gotta say i'm not feeling confident as i'm it down on gold ingots and there's another book here for us uh soul speed 2 might as well hold on to it for right now and with the last of our gold we get a potion and that's it that brings us to three books six bottles of fire resistance but only four ender pearls which is a complete and total dagger and i think that i pissed a guy off i say that we just try to get out of this biome as soon as we can and stay away from any ledges as well <laughs> let's just get back to the portal and try to heal up real quick and of course no ender pearl for me either back to the overworld we go and i feel stocked up but not with what we need we got a whole ton of blackstone 20 crying obsidian almost half a sack of leather three and enchanted books and a whole ton of fire potions along with spectral arrows and some quartz but we still need five more ender pearls so as much as i would like to be done with this chore we're gonna have to keep trudging on and so back to the warped forest we go all right only five more slip only five more that ain't no thing but a chicken wing and you sir are gonna be my first bait or the both of you. And wonderful. Now I just got two pissed off Endermen and they haven't shown up. He disappeared on me. All right, careful there, sir. Head back in if you'd like, but I'm kind of busy and I know that there's another one out there looking for me. Ah, slam. And still no eyes. Oh my God, that was scary. Unfortunately, we got one eye from that Enderman too. Now only four more to go. Okay. I did not see a ghast around me. Now I never, now I never really understand how people get Ender Pearls so quickly. For me, I feel like it always takes forever and I feel like it's always super dangerous too. And that brings us up to three Ender Pearls. Now we only need two more and i feel like i always spook them but they never come back to my den and down you go but no ender pearl so i think that this time we'll actually bridge up this way and hopefully this will work as a safety chamber it looks like it should be okay if not more than okay now please drop an ender pearl and that's four and i seem to have lost my diamond pick i don't really know where it went but the good news is we have an easy emerald trade back home so we can get that fixed up in no time and hopefully this guy drops our last ender pearl no luck there and we've got one more bogey right here and of course he's disappeared once again and we'll narrow down this guy too but we're starting to run out of food we only have our potatoes left and there we go we have five feeling like i never want to go back to the nether again and so we can pillar up here and head on back to our portal and let's quickly get in there before the gas sees us and it is nighttime on day 54 gosh that took a long time but we now have 16 ender eyes and we have a bunch of blaze rods as well so we'll make 16 eyes of ender and we can trade out our golden boots for our diamond ones and so we'll make a fermented spider eye and we'll throw it in the brewing stand with some water bottles that's going to give us three potions of weakness 
Now we can toss in the gunpowder, and now these three potions will become splash potions, and we'll get the advancement for local brewery. And so the next thing for us to do is going to be to throw this flash potion of weakness on the villager over here, and we'll try to get a good throw. Try to have him come back here. And now we can give our villager a golden apple, and we'll start to cure them. And this is my first time curing a villager in Minecraft ever. But it's just as simple as that. In a couple minutes, we'll come back, and Beulah will be good to go, and they'll give us awesome trades forever. And while I'm at it, I think I'm going to take my phantom member. Brains. We'll take our redstone as well, and we'll make some awkward potions, which we can then turn into potions of slow falling. I'm gonna craft up even more glass bottles, and we'll get some water into them as well. And now we have three potions of slow falling, as well as no more inventory space. And we'll once again make a couple more awkward potions, and we'll make a couple of more slow falling potions. Now we can take some redstone dust and apply it right here, and this is gonna make the potions even stronger. And we get the advancement for zombie doctor, meaning that our villager has finished curing. We'll take these slow falling potions that now have a duration of four minutes, and we'll take gunpowder in order to make these ones into splash potions and i really do like my potions for the end fight so we're gonna do it one more time making up some awkward potions turning them into potions of slow falling and then buffing them up with redstone we'll put all of the potions right in here along with our potion brewing ingredients and we can check in with our villager friend over here and you'll see that we now have a trade for one iron for an emerald which now that i think about it is huge for the game plan and we also have iron tools for one emerald and we'll keep leveling you up we can get a diamond shovel for one emerald that just seems absurd we can put all of these tools in this chest right here. And maybe we could do a couple more trades over here and see what happens. What's up, Clifton? We can get five more emeralds from him. But it's still not going to be enough to do anything right now. However, I will steal one of these beds. And since I can, I'm going to lock up this area so nothing happens again. And we'll take more donations from the iron farm. Thank you. And then we'll trade with Clifton one more time, get 14 emeralds, which we can now use here to get a town bell. And maybe even a second one, and that gets us so close. But still no cigar. And it might be a good idea to have some paper for rockets. And we can make 57 firework rockets. That'll totally do for the moment. And now I can assure you as the moon sets over there and we start day 56, we're gonna find ourselves the stronghold. And better yet, we're gonna do it all with Dorothy too. Get out of here. And you too. And a num 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 num. A num 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 num. But I can't seem to find Dorothy anywhere. And there she is, my sweet, sweet girl. Dorothy, you and I are going on an adventure. And we won't be back for a long, long time. A long, I don't really know. But I'm gonna throw this eye of Ender. And you and I are gonna go in this direction right there. And we won't go home until we find this thing called a stronghold. I hope that you're up for that challenge, girl. I mean, I really couldn't do this without you, girl. And you see, Dorothy, if we happen to find any villages, we're gonna take their waystones. Maybe just like that one over there. So that way, we'll have an easy access way to get back to the stronghold. Hold. Now talk about smart thinking, and I'll be taking you, and we continue on, Dorothy. We continue on, and my mama my, just over the top of the hill, we can have a looky here at a desert temple. And it looks like we have no mobs guarding it, but we're still gonna have to be careful. And it looks like no mobs down here too. Now we'll take out all of the TNT once again, and we'll take a look about what's inside. We have some gunpowder here, a golden apple. In this one, we're gonna have punch two on a book. Another saddle. We can put away these blocks here. Some more gunpowder. In the third chest, we have two diamonds and another golden apple, along with another saddle. And in the fourth one, we have one more saddle and a couple emeralds. I would say definitely worth the pit stop. And so we'll get on out of here and we'll keep on heading out with Dorothy. And we have a desert well as the sun sets. I think that we'll toss out one more ender eye and it wants us going in this direction now. Since it's on land, that's totally fine with me. Don't worry, Dorothy. I'll keep you safe. And what a pretty backdrop, honestly. And so I'm going to make a bridge for Dorothy and I so that we can hopefully make the way together. Come on, girl. Off we go. Good jump, girl. And run. We gotta get out of here. And we have a cutesy little village down here, too. But I think that I'm gonna sleep for the night to be safe. And top of the morning to you, Dorothy. We gotta keep on keeping on, girl. If we can get through this valley, we should be good to go. Now, slow and steady, girl. Slow and steady. On, look at these camel moves, girl. Now I gotta get out of the way. Dorothy, are you okay? You have so much health. You're fine. Okay. It's really me that I have to worry about. I have, like, no food. And we've gotten through the mountain, Dorothy. Let's throw another ender pearl. All right. And we'll keep on going this way. It's just you and me, girl, with only four minutes to save the world. And we've got another desert village over here. And here it goes, girl. <laughs> Great jump. And let's see if we can't steal some wheat real quick. It would be awesome to get some sheep as well. I'm gonna throw out you, and we'll grab some of you, and we'll craft some of you, and then we'll take you back up. And we'll grab some more of you just to be safe. Now let's once again toss another ender pearl, and it's having us go this way this time. We might as well activate this waystone while we're here. And now, Dorothy, we head back this way. And now right here wants us to go this way. I think we are just about here. Now it wants us to go here. This right here 
here just about might be our spot. And we have done it. We'll place our waypoint right here. Take out our chest and put away these materials real quick. And I say that there's really no other thing to do except for to start digging down. And a little pop out cave, but no stone bricks whatsoever. So we're going to keep on digging down. And I hear mobs. It makes me feel like we're getting close. Although you want to be ready for anything. And our pearls still telling us to go down here. And we're now at the deep slate layers. I don't really know what that means for the stronghold. And we have a ton of bone blocks right here. And diamonds. Might as well get you. And two extra diamonds. But this makes me want to think that it's the portal room right here. If not, it's just a super random fossil. These are bone blocks. And gosh, I love the sound that it makes when you break them. But I guess I might as well dig just a little bit deeper. And there it is. I see stone bricks. And yes, I spy the fortress. Now let's head on down. And it looks like we have the starter room right here. Let's eat some food real quick. And with our sword at the ready, inside we go. And two more diamonds. And some iron. And it looks like we found the library. And we have an eye armor trim. And let's see, anything else in here? I really don't know anything about looting libraries but it looks like we have one more over here and let's see we got another eye ar armor trim and power four fortune two on a book efficiency two on another book and it really couldn't get any better and now i think that's it it's time to find the portal room we have another chest right here and nothing important and it looks like it goes to a dead end and if this is where the portal room is i just got so lucky let's take out this real quick and we can put in our 12 eyes we already have two in there and we're officially ready for the end pop that guy back in there Better spawn and thank the lord to find sandstone getting to the top is taking forever and we've finally made it now we have way too much stuff on us but since we can we're gonna make another diamond pick you also want to grab this water as well as the waypoint and we'll bring it on down to the portal room and so now we can place our waypoint right here and we'll name this one portal and so now we'll be able to pull her all the way back to cameltopia from here and when we want to we can head back to the portal too and we'll leave dorothy there at the moment we'll come back for her but right now we're gonna get everything we need for the end fight so we can grab our potions of slow falling grab some iron from the iron farm and make sure that we have two buckets of water for use at the end. We're also going to take our anvil, us up an enchantment on our bow. Looks like unbreaking too. Maybe we can level you up one last time and we'll see if we get a pretty good master trade. And a diamond pickaxe for one emerald. Talk about a steal. And so being as good as we can be, on day 59 we head to do the end fight. In case this is it, this has been super fun. I'm really surprised with how far I've gotten in this world without dying. And I might still post this and we'll have to give it another shot. I feel like my luck in this world has been worth sharing. For right now let's head back to the portal and it's time to start the end fight. Or at least it will be in a moment. We'll place down our anvil, head back up to the top of the stairs, because we still want to get all the goodies from our chest. And I also forgot, I just need one more thing. Food. And it looks like Dorothy is all the way up on the hill. <laughs> Look how far away she is. So we'll name our bow Snappy. And we'll get Unbreaking 2, Power 5 on it. Sorry, Power 4. We can put Efficiency 4 on our pickaxe, and put Unbreaking 3 on our sword. I think we'll craft a new shield while we're at it, and put that guy away. And so we'll travel back to Cameltopia one more time, so that we can harvest the peanut butter jelly, and we'll smelt that up real quick. And so, officially, on day 59, we're gonna hop into the void for the first time. And I'm not gonna do much talking during this, we're just gonna do the cinematic style. So wish me luck, and make it good, editor slip. Psych! I don't really trust replay mode at the moment, so I think that we're gonna do this live comm style. And this is the the second time in my life ever trying to fight the dragon. So, Calabunga. All right, and it looks like we have a box spawn. We'll start to dig on up, and the game is on. I'm gonna quickly make it an infinite water source. And there he is, the beautiful dragon. And we're gonna get to work on making a bunch of these infinite water sources around here, while being careful for that dragon's breath. I didn't mean to do that, but... <laughs> We did just throw three of our splash potions right there. It's okay, we still have plenty more. And we're dodging another fireball, but we keep on with these infinite sources of water. And he keeps on barely missing me. <laughs> Here goes another source right there. We're slowly but surely making our way around. And you can tell he surely isn't happy that he missed me there. And he's trying with his second pop shot too. And now that we have all these infinite water sources, we're going to place down tons of water just to ensure that we have plenty of a safe space going forward. And the dragon's trying to take me out with the side sway, but he can't seem to do it. But he really has angered the Enderman. And I feel like you can really never be too careful with this sort of thing. Especially in hardcore. Who cares if it takes me a little bit longer to kill the end dragon? And he's getting close to hitting me now. So it's just about time to start taking out the crystals on the top of the pillars. Now let's see if we can get it on the first shot. There we go. Three times. Ouch. All right. Now let's be careful here. A pop shot with the dragon's breath would definitely take me out. And we got to make sure that we're not looking up too much to take out another another pillar or two right here. And he got me with some dragon's breath right there. I feel like I got that one. And there we go. May have gotten that one too. I think that we'll have another potion of slow falling. Sounds like I've fingered an enderman too. And so we're gonna pillar up and try to get some pop shots. And we'll get that one right there. And so it looks like the rest of them are just gonna be pillars. I'm gonna fly up and slowly float down. Sounds like the dragon might be perching at the moment. We'll take that out, place down a block, and then take that out, and it won't take give us any damage. Perfect, perfect, flawless, flawless. Let's be quick. We'll head up this pillar now, put some new blocks into our hand. And we got the same situation here. We're gonna take out the fence. Then we'll place a block right here. We'll go one more up. We'll crouch and we'll take out that guy again. And we might as well jump out of the way of the dragon's 
Opera. And I think that we only have one more, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that we have an Enderman after me. There we go. And we'll drink one more potion of slow falling, as well as we'll pillar up, because I really can't tell if we have any more. And I'm going to double check, but I think that we might be good on towers. It looks like we are, so we might as well try to take out this dragon. And I only have nine arrows left. We might as well conserve all the blocks that we can. And I do want to quickly see if we can get some dragon's breath. And throw a fireball at me, will ya? And then... And let's be ready for when he perches. It looks like he's going down, and so we will too. And the clouds really do look so ominous as he heads down. We're on the side of his head, which is a good thing. See how many critical hits we can get. Not bad for the first round. Now we'll try to land some more shots on him while he flies around. But I'm almost out of ammo. And so we want to use this power for bow wisely. We'll get down here real quick. And once again, we're going to aim for the head. Now he's at half health. And we're landing shots on him too. And we're out of arrows. We've upset an enderman. Slowly get back into the water. Okay, crisis averted. And we'll get some dragon's breath too. Now we just wait for him to perch. And here we go once again. And it looks like the head is facing this way. And hopefully just one more round and he'll be done. And good try there. You got close that time. And just perch already, will you? And I gotta skate. And I gotta say, the sky has started to look really crazy. And Endermen are dropping in from the sky. Almost like a grainy black background with the clouds. It really is quite ominous. Maybe this is what the sky starts to look like when the dragon's about to, to die. I just wouldn't know any better. Now let's finish you off and mission complete. And I almost died from the dragon's breath. And so we'll collect all of this XP. That's 40, 58, 68, and we'll grab the dragon's egg. I'm not sure what just happened. Did I mess it up by clicking on it? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. Oh, if it's behind us. So we'll place it towards one under it, just like so. And then we'll dig it out. And we've settled the next generation. And so our new end gateway is right over there. And I say, real quick, let's hop back into the main world. And so we are back, a new man. Let's put away the dragon egg and the dragon's breath, along with the eyes of Ender. I say we keep the rest of it for the moment, and we'll quickly make some trapdoors so that we can get into the end gateway. And I gotta say, I'm quite proud of myself. I feel like I took on that dragon like an absolute champ. And so we'll pull her up, making sure that we don't look at any Endermen. And I've got my pinky glued to the shift key right now. But I think that we'll make a little bit of a platform to make this a little bit safer. Oh, imagine if I let go of the shift. And so we'll place a trapdoor right here. Or maybe it's a trapdoor right here. And whatever we did worked. We'll take this guy right here and on to the end game we go. All right, cool. We're on the other side and no easy end cities in sight. So we'll once again fill her back up here. Of course, we'll make another little platform right here too. And we'll take our first ever chorus fruit. And even before I was able to say the next thing, it looks like we have an end city and it looks like it even has a ship. Now talk about lucking out. And there's even another gateway right here. And it looks like my eyes have not deceived me. There is a ship right here. However, we're going to need a whole ton more blocks in order to pull her up. So I say we get to a mining and efficiency five on a diamond pick that always helps. And actually, it seems like the textures in the sky will just kind of change every once in a while. And I do really like it. It kind of makes the end feel like more ominous. And I think we'll get one more stack of blocks. We'll have three in total, and that should be good enough to get up to the ship. And man, I still can't believe it. This is so close to the portal. I'll leave the seed down in the description. And please leave a like if you're enjoying the video thus far. We still have 39 days left in this Let's Play. And that's a whole lot of time to get a whole lot done when we have all the gear that we have, especially when we have an elytra. And this is going to make me feel a whole lot safer. And now we can start to pull her up to the ship. And well, here goes nothing. And we're starting to get quite close to the ship. We're going to have to have our wits about us for any sh shulkers. And I can definitely hear them. And just here, all the way up here, we'll get the advancement for freeing the end. We're going to make this just a little bit safer as well. And I totally didn't mean to do that, but I guess it worked out. And let's get it. Our second ever elytra. We'll put that bad boy on. It looks like we can wear both at the same time, given the mod that I have. I hope that y'all are okay with that too. But we'll take the potions of healing too. And let's take a look inside of these chests. A smite four. <laughs> Unbreaking three projectile protection three boots. In this one, we have a fortune two shovel. We don't really need any more saddles. But I say let's get our rockets into our offhand. Maybe take a quick practice flight right here. And man, I just can't believe this sword once again. We'll put our rockets in our offhand. And I say we glide down over to this room. And not too shabby, we'll break in here. And we'll just stay here for a minute. And we can take out these shulkers. We're gonna dip out of here real quick. <laughs> Maybe do some healing up in the air. And then I think I wanna head in here. Let's see if we can try to be sneaky. We have some diamonds in the chest. A bit more iron and some gold and emeralds. Cool, and I did see an ender chest too. And we'll fly over here as well. Let's see, we got a sword right here. And they're really starting to go ham now. Now I say we hop off real quick. We're gonna fly once up. Let's see, what can I do from this building here? I wanna be careful right here. And thank goodness for the elytra. Now let's make sure that we land really safe. And we'll heal up because we're just at two hearts. <laughs> now I do wanna see if we can get one more pair of elytra. That way we'll be safe in case it takes a long time for us to get mending. And it looks like we found a second end city with another end ship. And so we'll get a second pair of elytra. 
A projectile protection for chestplate. Another awesome sword. And so, feeling satisfied, we're gonna get away from this end city and get ready to start building some awesome projects. And maybe not the perfect landing. So we'll throw out some end stone. Perfect, and we're down, and we're back through. And now that we have all of this different gear, we can finally head back to Cameltopia. And so, although we could portal home, we still have Dorothy out here somewhere. So we're gonna head back to the surface to get her, and we'll go home together. Okay, our plan is to find Dorothy. We don't care about anything else right now. We just care about her. The goal is gonna be to get to that village right there to sleep the night safely, and then her and I will return to Cameltopia together. All right, girl, it's time to head home. And I know that home's in the opposite direction, but we gotta sleep for the night. We gotta get away from these phantoms. But they're not hurting me, Dorothy. I hope that they're not hurting you too much. And Dorothy, your juke moves are so good. Perfect. Now I'll sleep for the night, and we'll head out in the morning, Dorothy. And imagine if this was a mending trade. I would've lost my mind. And home is 1,500 blocks away, so that might take a little bit. So I say it's good that we're going bright and early. But Dorothy, girl, it's just about time to build your statue. And it looks like we have another desert temple over there. But I I think that we have plenty of good loot at the moment, and I think I see our home in the distance. And with that iron farm in the distance, I know that we've arrived home. And as you can see, we have plenty of awesome things, and I'm breaking three diamond pickaxe. And I'm breaking one pick, knock back one, smite three sword. We'll switch out our boots for unbreaking three, projectile protection five, or four once again. <laughs> we got 57 iron, 24 gold, couple of potions of healing. I guess I'll probably use this new chest plate too. We'll put away the boots. We also have six diamonds. And we can put the rest of the auras there. And I say that we take our first flight in the overworld. It is now day 63, and this is everything that we've accomplished thus far. And we still have plenty left to do, and plenty of time to do everything that we want to. I gotta say, I am quite proud of how quickly I was able to do all the dragon fighting and everything like that. And this playthrough is really showing me that I'm starting to get good at the game. I'm gonna do some thinking about what we want to do in the future, as well as what sorts of farms we want. And so next time I chat with you, we'll have a game plan. And now, it is two weeks later. And so, the next major project on our hands is going to be to build a giant replica of her. So that is going to be the next big project over the next hopefully 20 or 30 days. It is now day 64 and I really do hope to fit a ton of building into the rest of the playthrough. However, in order to make a statue of Dorothy, we're going to need a ton of resources. And her statue is going to involve a ton of smooth sandstone, which to me means that we need an automatic way of smelting. So we're going to take the 20 iron that I have in my hands right here and we're going to craft up a ton of buckets. And of course, I need nine buckets, but I'm just one short. Talk about bad luck. So hopefully we have a a little bit in the chest right here we do have enough so we'll craft up one more bucket and then we're gonna head over to the lava pool in this direction the reason being we need nine buckets of lava in order to make an automatic lava farm and this farm is super easy to make we just take the buckets of lava and we get some dripstone and we can put those two materials together in order to make an automatic lava farm so now that we're done collecting all of this lava we're gonna head back to cameltopia and it's actually been so long since i've been playing that i forgot that i had an elytra but now that we're home we'll put these buckets of lava away and then we'll head on down to the mine so that we can hopefully get ourselves some dripstone. And I know that I have full diamond armor on and I've already beaten the game, but this still kind of makes me nervous. But unfortunately, we can't go mining without any torches, so we're gonna have to head back up. And it honestly might not be a bad idea to try a new cave in order to get some dripstone. What's up, Dorothy? So I say we venture out and try to find ourselves another cave. Actually, I think that a quick water bucket will come in handy. And now off we go. I think that we'll try this ravine down here. So now we head on down to the abyss. Water bucket. <laughs> and I think that we have stumbled across another spawner right here. I guess it couldn't hurt to check it out. Uh, it's a spider spawner, I can hear that. Now they're taking both of each other on. We fight for the victor. <laughs> they're all just killing each other. Get him. Oh, and I have a feeling Dripstone might spawn a little bit higher in the world, so why don't we head up here? I guess that it really can't hurt to grab a little bit more dirt while we're at it. Man, I never thought I would be so happy seeing so much dirt. We ended up getting five and a half stacks of dirt from that. That was just one vein. There's another one over there, and it looks like we've somehow found daylight. But for now, I'm going to stash away all of this dirt that we found, and we'll stash away our diamond tube, bringing us to a total of seven. Now let's continue to adventure on, and hopefully, eventually, we'll find ourselves a Dripstone cave. And while we're exploring, I might as well tell you well, that we do have a discord now and i'm realizing that we don't have a bed so we're gonna have to find ourselves a cave quickly but if you're a small hardcore youtuber and you'd like to collaborate on a video or something like that that's a perfect way to find me as well as it's a perfect way to kind of just hang out and get to know me better share your ideas and builds with me and overall enjoy minecraft together we're about 500 blocks from cameltopia thankfully not too many mobs yet and look at that just over the hill we have another village we have a broken nether portal right there too this place is actually really cool as well as plenty of enemies which i'm gonna let the iron golem take out we're heading over to the broken nether portal and let's see here we got a bunch of gold a mending golden axe two fire charges and some obsidian and you sir can die but i think i can take on these two spiders without any 
any difficulty. Unless our Iron Golem friend does instead. Thank you, my dear protector. But I say, just to be safe, why don't I try to take one of these beds right here? And I'm dearly sorry, my villager friend, I'm gonna protect you. So before we get blown up this morning, why don't we head to the skies and we'll try to find ourselves another cave. And maybe we have something right here next to the lake. It looks like we do a massive cave. Now let's swing on down with our elytra. Maybe not the safest option here, but it looks like there's no entrance here, so we're gonna have to keep going. Or maybe I can make up a couple more doors and we'll dive on down to see if we can find ourselves a ravine. And I don't really know how an ender chest works. I'm gonna try to use it for the first time. I think I just lost a ton of stuff. <laughs> now talk about an L. At least we still have an Elytra. And hopefully we can figure out some other sort of smelting solution that's a little bit more time efficient. And we're back up, but it is nighttime, so I'm gonna try to head down here. Maybe we can pull a pro gamer tr trick and try to sleep. Hopefully this works and I don't get hit. And home sweet home. It definitely feels good to be back. We got eight iron ingots from that. Now we can head back to the house to drop off our materials. And man, I think that in comparison to the rest of the desert, our place is looking super good. Now we can drop off our materials as well as take some diamonds to make an axe because I don't know if we had one already, but I can't find. So let's see what we get. We get efficiency too. But now that we're back at Cameltopia, I still haven't figured out a smelting solution. But that's okay because we still don't have the materials that we need in order to smell anyway. So that's what I'm gonna do now while I think. We'll take out our shovel. Honestly, we'll probably have to use a couple of shovels. And we're gonna dig out a huge area around here so that we can start to get the materials that we're gonna need in order to build a gigantic version of Dorothy. And since gathering sand is so boring and I have no idea how to make it sound more interesting, I'm gonna do this cinematic style. I know that we haven't done too many cinematics for this playthrough. That's actually kind of the point. But as we get into the building process, I do love me some cinematics. So I think that the cinematic chapter of the video is starts now. I would say that we're making pretty steady progress. We've gone through about a shovel and a half, but I did want to pause real quick because the wandering trader has arrived. And man, I gotta say, this playthrough just keeps getting luckier. If we head into this chest, you're gonna notice that we now have four oak saplings. And if we find this invisible man somehow, you'll notice that we also have mangrove poppy goals. But it does seem that I'm getting attacked by phantoms. Get blocked. So I say, let's take care of this guy real quick. Munch on some pork chops because we are super hungry. Now that he's gone, I did want to show you how much sandstone we've gotten. But man, this guy just Knock up right there. The two, and get off me. Some gunpowder to kick, but if we head into our chest right here, you'll notice that we have just about a full chest of sandstone, and we have a little bit more in this one. And it looks like we've got another bogey. Get out of here. But we still have plenty of more work to do. And yes, I do know that I could have done this more efficiently. It is totally possible to make a sand duplicator. And I could have just taken out a pickaxe and started mining the sandstone without digging up all the sand first. But I do kind of want to terraform this area right here. We're going to make a nice terraced area. And in this area, we'll either put a massive farm, or if we have time, we might even try to make a Parthenon-like structure. But to be honest, I have no idea how much time it's going to take me to make Dorothy. And we still need to finish this area. Area, so I say let's continue on cinematic style and I'll check in with you when we're completely done with digging. This upside down pyramid took me about two and a half hours to make, but I gotta say, I really do like how it came out. It really has quite a steep slope, and I think that we're gonna fill this entire area in with dirt and make this place into a little bit of a terraced garden. But you will notice we do have plenty of trees growing now, and it's also worth mentioning I have figured out the smelting situation. You see, now that we have an elytra, we can just fly on over to the lava pit in this direction, and then we can take those buckets of lava and get to smelting some smooth sandstone. So I say, let's head back to the storage area. And by the way, we are on day seven. 75 now for three quarters of the way through the playthrough and we're slowly making progress but we can reach into this chest and we'll grab all of the dirt i still have a feeling that it's not going to be enough but we'll get crackalackin at put in dirt into this terrace pyramid and while we do that we'll start collecting our birch logs we're gonna need a whole ton of them for our statue of dorothy so i say let's keep on cinematic style
<laughs> That's not too shabby of a start. We have a little bit of our inverted pyramid filled with crops. And as you can see right here, we have a ton of furnaces as well. I wanted to speed up the smelting situation, and I've also grabbed a ton of lava for future use. And so we are going to have to get some more dirt, but I do want to get to work on building Dorothy as soon as possible. And in order to do that, we're going to need some blackstone, some smooth blackstone to be specific. And so that's going to call for another trip to the nether, so we can put on some golden boots, grab some spare blocks, as well as get some more food. And now we can head into the nether once again. Now I hear a guest. I am happy that we have our cover, although he could see us right there. Now let's head on back to that warp forest. And man, I got to say, this is my first time flying in the nether with an elytra, and it just makes things so much easier. And we have arrived back at the bastion. So let's start mining away, and hopefully nothing bad happens to us. Now that should be enough blackstone for the moment, and home sweet home we go. So I say let's head on back to the pyramid. And here we are, the birch trees really are starting to grow well, and we have just about 12 stacks of smooth sandstone too. Now let's see what happens when we start smelting our blackstone. We have cracked polished blackstone bricks. That should be a good building block for the statue of Dorothy. We'll take out the smooth sandstone and we'll put it in more cracked, and it looks like we filled our first chest of smooth sandstone. But you sir have to go. And so we'll load up even more into the furnace, and that way we can keep on smelting. We might as well chop down our trees while we're at it. And it looks like we have another bogey. We're gonna have to see who emerges victorious. I think I will. But no gunpowder, unfortunately. We only have six rockets left. You, sir, are gonna have to go too. Man, I love smite on my sword. And the third bogey. We can once again bring you over here. And man, looking at these bushes behind the creeper makes me think about how far we've come. Thank you for the gunpowder. So I think that after I chop down these trees, is it raining? I don't think so. I don't know if it can rain in the desert, but in order to get more birch as soon as possible, I think that we're going to head down to the caves after we're done chopping these trees. And that way we'll have more dirt to fill in this area, as well as to expand our birch tree farm. But first, let's see how much of a harvest we can get right now. We got almost two stacks from that. And of course, we'll place back down the saplings. And it's funny how essential it is to replace down your saplings in a desert only world. Because if I forget to replant the saplings, then there's almost no chance we're going to get them again. So now, while it's still daylight, I'm going to try to find another cave. And we'll go exploring until we can get a whole boatload of dirt but i figure i might as well grab a shovel or two so we'll take to the skies to find a new cave and it looks like that didn't take too long so we'll drop on down and see if we can find ourselves some dirt along with fend ourselves away from the creepers while we're at it i might as well grab some coal too you sir can get away but it looks like right off the bat we have some dirt and even more up here good thing i got my reflexes on but let's start digging away and another bogey and we found a zombie spawner block that up real quick and a mine shaft too but i'm really just trying to pillar over here to get some dirt now once again we get to digging and it looks like we have more dirt up here so i'm gonna try to fly up this right here looks like a pretty good vein now we're up to three and a half stacks and a little bit more and it looks like this vein is quite big now we're up to five stacks let's keep on going and it looks like another big vein here i'm gonna call that a dub and we'll craft up another door to head in through here and hopefully get even more dirt in this under in this underwater cave and another bow game see if we can get you this time no gunpowder you treat me to some gunpowder dear sir i beg it of you guess those guys aren't really givers but it don't matter we're looking for dirt anyway. And another big vein here. A giant vein. This might be exactly what we're needing. So with eight stacks in hand, I think I'm just about ready to head back home. And man, do I love having an elytra. Although it's just about time to craft some more rockets. But I say that we drop off our materials that we don't need. This is really starting to become a chest monster. But we'll take out our dirt and get along to see how many crops we can harvest. If you've watched thus far in the playthrough, please do consider giving a like on the video. As a small YouTube channel, it really does make a huge difference. But let's get into another cinematic Make it good, editor slip. And that's how much progress eight stacks of dirt was able to get us. You could say I'm feeling a little bit disappointed. As you can see, we don't even have enough potatoes to finish off the dirt that we have. So the plan is going to be to get dirt once again, but we also do want to get ourselves some lava. But if we head over here, we have a ginormous lava pit and a kitty cat. If only we had fish, but we have 13 buckets, so we're going to fill them all up, and this way we'll be able to keep on smelting. And our elytra is starting to get low, so we're going to have to keep a tab on that, so we can continue to smelt up our sandstone. So we'll head over this way, and hopefully find another cave that's close so that we can get ourselves some more dirt. And right now it's day 82. The goal is to start building Dorothy by day 85. If you are enjoying this video, and you would like to see another type of 100 days video like this, you know another sort of like challenge video, definitely let me know in the comments. I've really been having so much fun for this entire playthrough and I'd love to do another one. So I'm open to any and all of your ideas. And it looks like we have a bit of a ravine right here. So I say, alright, be careful slip. But anyway, 
It does happen to have dirt, so we're in luck here. Just gotta chill out and eat some bread real quick. Now let's pull her up and get ourselves some dirt. Gosh, that really scared me for a second there. So I say we're going for about eight or nine stacks of dirt once again. And we're getting lucky with another vein of dirt right here. And then I think another one over here. This vein looks pretty big too. Oh yeah, three levels deep. That's exactly what we're looking for. And we got two and a half stacks from that one vein. Now let's see what we can get from this bad boy. Not as many, but that's still okay with me. We have a third vein right here, which is looking pretty plentiful. And it keeps on going now we're up to four and a half stacks and is this what i think it is are these bone blocks they are is this like a fossil or something i have no idea someone let me know in the comments looks like we've stumbled into another dirt vein i do hear zombies around me let's scoop all of this up and once again quite a big vein which brings us up to almost six stacks and more dirt over here maybe while we're down here we go for 10 stacks just to be safe we're already up to seven and a half stacks we got a bogey except for he's got me long range right now so we'll pull her up safely to the dirt let's see how many we get this one just seems to open up too oh yeah oh this is perfect look how big this dirt vein is we'll throw these guys away and we're now up to nine and a half stacks so i say that we try to get ourselves one more dirt vein there she is and for whatever reason i don't have a good feeling about this i feel like now's the perfect time for a creeper to sneak up on me but this vein looks quite big as well that brings us up to about 11 stacks of dirt now we should hopefully be good to go but let's try to get out of this cave i see sunlight and home sweet home but we'll head on over to the pyramid take out our dirt and hopefully finish filling in the pyramid with dirt let's do it cinematic style Make it good, editor slip. And we have finally done it. Although, as you can see, we're not fully done with the potatoes. But we'll get around to doing that as we build Dorothy. For it's day 85, and we gotta get a moving. And I'm really hoping that we have enough materials. We have at least one full chest of smooth sandstone, along with leftovers over here. And of course, tons more smelting up in the furnaces. But Dorothy is gonna be going in this area right here. Her leg is actually gonna cut through this mound right here. Which means that before we start, we're gonna have to do a little bit of terraforming. I'm gonna get to doing that right now, and we'll check in after that. Actually, scratch the that. I think that would be cool if Dorothy was actually intertwined with the train. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And after a long last, it's finally time to build Dorothy. Consider subscribing if you've gotten this far in the video, and make it good, Editor Slip. Hey Dorothy, your statue is complete. And I mean, look at this thing, it's gorgeous. It is by far the biggest structure that I've ever made. And this design is completely my own too. I just tried my best using Minecraft camel reference images. And unfortunately, there's nothing inside Dorothy. I bet you it's a little bit of a mob cave right now. And we're not gonna have enough time to fix it up because it's already day 97, which means that we have just about three days to make this place look pretty. So I'm gonna start spamming decoration blocks. We're gonna have to make the paths behind us look a little bit better. And we'll do it with another replay mod soon. Cinematic. I really can't wait to see what the final product looks like here. So make it good, editor slip.
unfortunately, it is time to say goodbye to this world. I am a sad, sad man. I really did enjoy this 100 days. We sure got a whole lot out of it, and we were incredibly lucky the whole time. I think that we've given a wonderful world to our pal Dorothy. We have our beautiful looking sugarcane farm right here, which in retrospect was a good idea setting up at the beginning. It provided us with a ton of paper the whole time. We have our starter house right here, which we never really got out of. It has all of our smelting items, along with this world's only brewing stand. We can close the door, and if we head over in this direction, we have the good old storage house. This guy served us well. We did a pretty good job at keeping everything organized too. So I'll consider that a win. We have our starter cave, which I've decked out with a bunch of mangrove trapdoors, which I think makes it blend in a little bit more with the surrounding area. We of course have stairs leading up through the entire village. We can make our way over to our fully completed crop field. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone make anything like this. The idea just came to me out of nowhere and I really like how it turned out. If we head back to the town center right here, we can head on over to the iron farm where we can pass the market along with our nether portal. Head on over to the iron farm and work in the whole time we have a ton of iron in this guy now which is a shame because we don't have a chance to use it if you'd like to see 200 days in the desert here i would like to see 200 likes on this video which for a small youtube channel like me is a super big ask and of course it wouldn't be day 100 if we didn't say goodbye to peanut butter and jelly thank you and the rest of the family for providing us food this whole time we also have this awesome farm that leads in this direction and provides even more of that oasis vibe we have our enchanting area over here and the villager hut over here although i'm not really sure where our villager went so if we pass Dorothy over here, we can head on over to the huge statue of her, which this is definitely the biggest build that I've ever made in Minecraft. And golly, it looks awesome. We might break our elytra, but I might as well fly and check it, take another look at it. I mean, look how big this thing is. Took a ton of time, but we can also head up her tower. From the top, we can see just how big she really is, along with a gorgeous view of the entire village of Cameltopia. But that'll be it. If you got this far in the video, please do consider subscribing, and I'll catch you all in the next 100 days.